Uh, thank you for coming, Cal. Glad to be here. This is our second meetup. Right. We had one last week as well. I wasn't aware of that. It was, it was quite an introduction to SEO, and then on the 13th, we're having our third one. And we'll probably pick out an email. Um, having our third one, it's going to be on thinking pages and sales funnels. Nice. I'll get my spiel once it like this. Now, both Frank and Sabrina came to the first one last week. I know today's a holiday, I did not realize that when I was making the reservation. And then I didn't realize that this more, or I was, I was worried over the weekend. I was like, are we going to have, it? is the space going to be open? It's so hard to know, like, what is and what isn't. I was thinking, I was looking at Tesla stock this morning, it didn't change, it didn't, what's going on? And finally it dawned on it. It's uh, a federal holiday. The President's Day. No. Stock market's closed. I've done that before, I keep checking the mailbox. <laughs> Amazon still delivers. It's just yeah. the USPS to be Yeah, that's true. Well, again, I want to say thank you all for coming here today, bringing a incredible, nice, kind of dreary uh, President's Day, third Monday of February. Mm -hmm. I realized that, that this is one of those holidays that changes every year. Mm -hmm. uh, There's no exact date. Yeah. Last year, because my birthday is tomorrow, uh, we're you know, so it's the 21st, so it is still within the third week time frame. So every every few years, my birthday falls like my time president's day. Oh. So last year was on Oh, day. wow. Well, my birthday was the 11th of this month. Okay. I've got a lot of relatives whose birthdays in February. I think all the good people. Uh, me. Especially on Thursday. Mine's on Thursday. Look at the time. I'm out of here. <laughs> no room for May babies in here. <laughs> He's a fellow Pisces, you're an Aquarian, and you still get along. <laughs> if you're a May, that means you're a Taurus or German. Taurus. I'm stubborn. <laughs> the bull. Yeah, the bull. Uh -huh. And my mom was May 7th, so I knew that. But then my, oh, my younger brother's May 29th, because I'm he's a Gemini. So. Oh. That's, that's, a, that's all I knew. My friend did a Gemini. That's the twins, right? Because we always say he got multiple <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so for those of you that brought, brought your laptops, the free Wi-Fi uh, password is up there on the board. Um, so just go ahead and click in. Now you are going to have to go to their uh, to their website uh, to to do this. So just go to Frontier RTP Guest and uh, go to the Wi-Fi, and then uh, once you put that in, you you will actually there'll be a little thing here that says uh, visit their website to final finalize. Okay, hold on. Are we going to a meetup website or no. an RTP website? No, we're going to the, um, it's not a website, it's a, it's a, it's a Wi-Fi. Oh, oh okay, okay. Now, the, uh, when you click the little link that's going to be it's here, like, yeah. um, that will have you put, uh, put in a password uh, onto, onto a website, and then you'll be able to log in. Now, you may get some pop-ups like VPN and stuff, just ignore them, those will say okay. And then... <laughs> just accept the spam. No. Yeah. Just yeah. Spam. It's good for like 30 different pop-ups, is that big? <laughs> Sign up for a bunch of junk mail on your own. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, when I when I first I uh, created this group, uh, the Raleigh uh, the Raleigh Durham Small Business Owners, I wanted to make it, and I'm still going to be doing it this way. So I'm going to talk to the, the, the room reservation person, where I'm going to have uh, try to have one um, meetup every month, where it's just going to be uh, education based. And then a second meetup every month. I don't know when we'll come forward together. That's going to be what's called the Tech Day. That's going to be bring your laptops and let's start. Let's uh, let's do some. Now, obviously, you can take notes. Uh, the amount of material that we're going to cover in this one is not going to be as. Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, 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 I'll find you guys. Um, and, uh, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> so, so the, the, on the tech day is actually going to be going through actual procedures. So, I won't be covering as much uh, in-depth content because I want you guys to be going through the processes. Because uh, that's to me, that's how you learn is actually doing it. Uh, back when, uh, back in, when I lived in Wilmington, back in the early two thousands, I was a college math teacher. So I can teach the quadratic equation, equation all as much as I want to, but until you actually do it, you're not going to learn it. So 
So that that's why I created that detect base as well. I want to make sure that Frank is on, on the same page. Make sure he's got the Wi-Fi so we can continue. My laptop is broken. I couldn't bring it. My keyboard doesn't work. So. No, I am recording the uh, I am recording these uh, these classes. Last time I was on that table, it was at a forty-five degree angle. You're not going to be able to see on the first uh, video. You're not going to be able to see the, the TV screen as much. Uh, I know we went through a, a lot on the SEO one. Um, that is available on our website right now. And once, once this class is over, then I will uh, upload this uh, to, the, uh, to the website as well. Now, for those of you that are interested, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my website. Um, everything you see that, that I do is gonna be through my company, which is called Optimal Performance Academy, and it's gonna be uh, .org. So if you were to go to, the, uh, to that URL uh, up here, that's that's going to be it. that's going to take you to our website. What is the uh, the, net, the Wi-Fi network name? Um, let me see. Frontier. The LPSS. I think it's called Frontier at RQP Guest. Hmm, I'm not seeing it. This is a. I would have brought a Windows based uh, laptop, but I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> if we had some ham, we could have ham and cheese. If we had some cheese. <laughs> uh, what do you see in that? Okay. Wi Fi on one. LPSS. Uh, Are you you set? Yes, I do. And then type in F capital F for free okay. exclamation point co-working with a capital C. Okay. Thank you. Kevin. And make sure you are able to go to some random website and uh, make sure that you have access to it. And I, and I also just go to like a news website because you don't want to be remembering your cookies and that could be okay. I mean, give you a false positive. Because <laughs> that news website updates every <laughs> Uh, yeah. If I go to Optimal Forms Academy, I can go to this website and not have Wi Fi. Because it, it's, 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 it's memorizing the cookies. That always throws my cash. <laughs> no, I know Kyle is a, is, a, is a tech person as well, so if I'm saying anything wrong, please really step in and let me know. Okay, so what website do you all want to go to? Well, right now, I'm just going to show you what, what I'm doing right here. So okay. I'm going to go to my website, which is the optimalformaceacademy.org. So let's just maybe go ahead and, and go to that. And under services, I have this, uh, this event called Classroom. It's the very first one on there. Now, this is a membership uh, program that I am creating uh, at the moment. So the, this is going to be in order to the classroom. This is a $17 a month uh, membership thing. And I'm going to be recording all, my, uh, all the courses uh, on here. So I'll, I'm going to show you what it's going to look like if you were to um, um, er, uh, enroll into this course or any of, uh, or any of my online programs. So let me go ahead and go to. Because everything I, I host is on a website called Customer Hub. I'm going to log out because I'm in the wrong account. So if you were to go to optimalformacacademy.customerhub.com and you have what you purchased or you actually uh, uh, enrolled into my free program, and like I mentioned to Sabrina yesterday, mm -hmm. um, then you'll have, this is what it's gonna look like when you go to log in. The first time you log in, it's gonna be like a create account, so you're just gonna be putting your, your, basically your password information. It's actually just your password information. Because if I gave you the course on my website, then your, auto, your account was automatically created. So you will log in with your email that you that you would uh, normally have used, and then you would uh, uh, create your free password. Now what I'm going to do right now, as an example, since Kyle is not part of this, I'm going to walk what I, I walk through the process that Kyle can be uh, on the same page, and Frank, I'll do the same thing to you uh, as well. Yes. I'm going to go to my, uh, my CRM. Come on. We all, we all know we gotta wave our hands. <laughs> I, <forget. laughs> I don't know why that tiger just so slow. So I'm gonna go to, uh, I use a, a CRM called Keep. It's actually a company that used to also be called, come on in. Are you Kevin? Yes, I am. Cool. Now, I you your laptop? Yes. Okay, the, the, the password is right there behind you on the board. And we, 
doing your vlogging in? Are you a PC or, or Mac? I'm a PC. Okay, fantastic. You can see exactly what, how I'm doing it. So down here, you hit the icon and you look for a Frontier uh, at RTP Guest. Okay. It was like five or six. <laughs> and I'm gonna wait till you get logged in because um, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. And if you need an extension cord, I do have one on me. I think okay. in case your cord cannot reach the wall. I'm not using. So I'm filming this, but I, my my phone can plug into the wall, so I'm not using my extension. Nah, we're good. Thank you, though. Nothing to trip over that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you come. Somebody <laughs> And what's your name? Zach. Zach. Nice to meet you. My name is Kevin. We've got Kyle here sitting on your left. Sabrina, she was at our first meeting last week, and Frank was also at our first meeting last week. So what you got? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and give you guys these uh, free courses so that you can uh, uh, log in uh, into your account. And uh, we can see here contacts. So Kyle, I'm not sure if you're my contact in this. Let me see. No, you're not. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead, Kyle, I'm going to go ahead and add you real quick, if you don't mind. Perfect, right? Yeah. We'll see if you go. I'll be certainly scoot over if you want to and see what I'm doing here. Although you can see the thing too. Yeah. You can give me your telephone number or anything else. I'm yeah. just very, very basic. Who's it? That's it. Yeah. And Frank, what is your um, what is your last name? L A N H A M. Lamb Ham. What's your email? Frank.Lamb at Verizon.net. And Zach, I'm going to also give you a free course. Cool. I think he might just talk to you. Audit Oh. Last name? Leonard, L E O N A R D. And email. Excuse me, my full name is Zachary. Darren, D A R I M. Dot letter at gmail.com. Add you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I, once I add uh, in my CRM, once I add um, the, this uh, tag to you, yes. I think it's If you want to talk about CRMs, we can talk about that at another time or on, on, on a pilot basis. I, I switched over to Key from uh, MailChimp because I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot more stuff and everything's interconnected or integrated with this uh, one CRM. So, uh, Zachy, I'm going to go to, uh, go to you first since you're the top of the list here. I'm going to go to Tag. I'm going to give you that course called Roadmap for Business Success. Okay. So, there it is. And you got the course. Did okay. you pay for Key? I forget. I did. It's like $90. Okay, so it's the standard platform. Yeah, well, yeah, Keep is actually is going to be your CRM, like you know, for your email uh, campaign. It's also going to be for your landing pages, your sales pages. It's also your checkout forms. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it, it, it covers most of the stuff that most uh, online businesses need. And is that a WordPress app? No. Okay. No. It is, uh, it, I mean, you can configure it to work with WordPress, which is fairly easy. But no, yeah, any business can use it. It does not, you don't have to have a WordPress okay. Right. Yeah. Well, she's already got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So right now, uh, each of you guys, uh, if you have your email tool open, you will see that you just you, you get an email probably from me as well as the email from Optimal Performance Academy saying, you know, this is you need to log in to create your your account. Any time that you um, do a new account or a new course or a classroom or whatever, you'll get emails and say, hey, this, is, uh, this has been unlocked. Now, I am running a special right now. I'll talk more about that later. I call it the, the, the birthday special, the birthday bundle, where all of my courses, there's uh, there's eight other ones that are uh, paid, comes out to be about, about $2,000. I'm, uh, I'm selling all of those as a bundle for presents day and my birthday for $57. So it's, I mean, it's, 
don't know, 65 hours of material. So it is a lot of material. Well, granted, one of the courses is my podcast, so that's. I have a question. When, I, when I'm using this 2,000 hours of course material, how do I get my product done? The <laughs> integrate them together. Yeah, right. <laughs> Do a e right? Well, I mean, because the, the, the courses that, that, I'm, that I've done right now, I mean, one is like how to create your own online programs, how to create the, your lead magnets, how you know, to promote yourself. So the lead magnet one might be something you want to take a look at. Yeah. If your credit is somewhat challenged, and Sabrina I talked about a little bit about this for her, for her potential clients, I have a course called uh, Personal Credit Creator. It's how to increase your personal credit scores so that you can qualify for better um, uh, business loans. Uh, okay. You know, doing personal guarantees. I'm sure you you probably have to go through business loans with, or or even doing your net thirty, net sixty, net forty five accounts. Because he does uh, a, a, a an apparel business, yeah. so he's going to have to have have accounts where the apparel comes in before he before he sells it. Yeah. So for him, um, oh uh, yeah, he needs it. So so for him, yeah, I'm sure you're you've got probably pretty good credit. I'm assuming that you are against that. No shit. <laughs> Really? Yeah. But it's, uh, I'm sure you had to do a lot of personal guarantees on, on some of your business loans. So that's what yeah. that's the reason I, I created some of these. I, I mean, I'm being a bit facetious because I know I have to learn this stuff one way or the other. Yeah. Right? But there's a question of how much do I need to learn at what period, you know, at what point in time? And that's up to you because I mean, um, one of the courses that I, uh, one of the groups that I uh, just joined a few months ago, and I paid ten thousand dollars to be part of this group. This guy. Um, he used that platform. He doesn't use Customer Hub. He uses a place called Kajabi, and on Kajabi, uh, he, he releases all of his courses all at once. It would show six uh, six courses per page. The last time I looked, it was forty pages long, and it's not searchable by index. Oh, yeah. like, <laughs> How long has he been at this? Uh, for a few years, but the thing is, I mean, some of the things like Customer Hub, you can search by index. Yeah. So you can type yeah. in categories or the name of the course, and you can find it. So my, my thing is for you, if you, you know, if you were to uh, do the, uh, the birthday bundle, is to find out which ones that you could use right now, watch those, and then use the other, go to the other ones at a later time. Can you, can you purchase these all on cart? Yes, uh, the, the, the first, the lowest price one is 197, so I mean, five, so uh, eight courses at 97% yeah. discount. Right, uh, right, right. That's much better, much better. Yeah, now, is that a one-time price? Yes. Do you, now, get, do you get any updates or new courses? Uh, I will, uh, as new courses are on, that I, as I'm releasing, because I'm about that I'm starting a ninth course right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and that one is called the, the what is it called? Uh, the Client Lifecycle Marketing System is the nine stages that you, that, that a client goes through when they're, uh, when they're coming into your business. I'm sure you've already said this multiple times. What's the name of this? The birthday bundle or the course? Birthday bundle. <laughs> birthday bundle. <laughs> Now, if you want to go to it, it's the, it's the one in red on the board. And we're going to talk about, about this a little bit. So you see it's HTTPS um, slash slash birthday3.awfulperformanceacademy.org. That is known as a subdomain. That's one of the things we're going to be talking about today. That is a subdomain that I'm using as a redirect. And that's the other thing that we're going to be talking about. But you will see on the top as well, in, written in black, the top one is my website.org forward slash strategy. That is the schedule a one hour strategy session, which uh, Sabrina uh, and I had earlier today. So you signed up like 30 days ago. All courses for $57? That's the birthday bundle. How long is that going? Uh, on the, if you go to the landing page, it says it's going to be good until the end of the, uh, end of the month. And this is because it's your birthday. It's my birthday, it's also President's Day, and you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping on a bandwagon of, hey, I'm not selling you any furniture, but I'm gonna take <laughs> President's Day. And when it's not on special, how much is it? Um, the, most of the courses are at 197, the, uh, the, the online program creator is 597. And so it's like, you said $2,000. It's just shy of 2000 So you're basically giving it away. I am giving it away, yes. Okay. So I'm saying, why well, wouldn't I do that? <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I, I would say the same thing. <laughs> In my way, I'm turning 56, not 57. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers did, did not get for everything. Yeah. Supposed to be symbolic. <laughs> What's that? Supposed to be symbolic. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I wear a, a, a jersey, and only only real sci-fi geeks would get this. Is uh, I'm a Green Day fan, even though I was born and raised in Florida. Um, so I got my name on the back of the jersey, and I got the number 42 on it. Oh, yeah, of course. So if you're a geek, you understand it. Right? If you're not a geek, I have to explain it to you. 
I that, think that's from that. That's from, so, yeah. that's from, from the Chapter's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes, it is from yeah. 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 the The question is, do you have an monogram on a towel? <laughs> no, <laughs> you should. Do you only someone help with that? Hey, there you go. That's right. So much fun. Okay, so um, so so all of you now have have the course. So once you get the email, you're going to ask you to uh, to log in. Um, essentially, so we log in with your standard email address. You create your password. You have to enter it twice, and then you you're going to get logged in. And this is basically what you're going to see. You're not going to you're not you, you will see where it says Welcome to OPA. You will see Library of Courses, but you won't see Master Class or Classroom because those have not been you have not been released to them uh, as of yet. When you go to your Library of Courses. Roadmap should be here on the, uh, the top left. Okay, that's that's the course. Now, for those of you that you will see some other courses, and in this case, uh, on this account, everything's been uh, unlocked. But if it has not been unlocked, you will uh, you will see like a little lock here. Now, the birthday bundle is the one I'm giving away right now. Um, so that's that's the one um, again for fifty-seven bucks. This recording here is going to be what I call it in, in what's called the classroom. Um, you won't see that one either, but this is going to be the membership site that's going to be at seventeen dollars um, a month. Now, if you did join the classroom, you did. This will unlock in the top menu up here is this classroom, and that way you can go inside there, and you will see all uh, all of these courses. So last week, the introduction to SEO has already been up there, and it was approximately that class. Remember, we ran a little long. That was a two-hour and thirty-two minute uh, video. So that's where all of these classes are going to be uh, uploaded. So if you if you came a part of the membership and you want to see, hey, I, I need to rewatch that reintroduction SEO thing. You can you can scroll it up and down as long, as long as you like. These are not set up where one has to be watched before the other one. So you can you can jump to whichever one that you want. I'm not promoting the classroom yet, uh, only because there's only one class in there. After today, there'll be two. I mean, I, I will probably wait until April to, because I have like four or five classes. Uh, uh, it's, so that would, at least then it makes it worthwhile to be promoted, at least from my perspective. I mean, obviously, you can go to the website and buy it. I'm also working on a master class right now um, for the so in the library of courses. Uh, this, this is not a plug for this, uh, but I, I have this inside the starting business and discovering your purpose. This is the first two steps of the business kickstart program. And if you were to buy that, which is not for sale right now, you will see um, courses are going to be here on the right hand side. So this is how this is what it's going to look like when you go inside Customer Hub and you start looking at your programs. So we're back to the library of courses. So for an example, a roadmap for business success. I did change it to where it's actually only one. Uh, it's only one course. It's a forty-nine. It's a forty-nine minute basically a webinar uh, that, that I recorded, and uh, this is always my introductory uh, free giveaway for for anybody. And for those of you who are looking to build a content related site, you definitely want to have stuff that you give away for free, so people can get a taste. Of that's just a strong suggestion because that's how people start start building uh, to know about your trust. So anyway, this, I, I digress. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So right now we're uh, in this for exactly cows cases because this is our first time here. This is the Raleigh Durham Small Business Owners uh, Meetup. I created this meetup basically three weeks ago, and uh, we had our first meeting the last Monday at this time in the same room. And I probably will be continuing using this room until we probably outgrow the room. And then I may look at, I would have started looking at, say, a, 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 like one of the Durham County Libraries. There's one that's not too far from here. Um, I can seat up to 70 people. And uh, so I may end up doing that. My only drawback on using the library is, uh, is parking. And if I'm getting 50 or 60 people coming to a meeting, now I'm, now I'm going to have some, man, have some uh, at that location having a parking issue. I think I know what library you're talking about. It's the South Beach. Tiny, the parking lot is tiny. The parking lot is small, but the, uh, the conference room is huge. That's weird, yeah. So, um, so that would be maybe where I grow into, or if you guys know of other suggestions of places that uh, have relatively inexpensive uh, rooms, because I don't want to charge for the meetups, um, uh, the, 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 uh, let me know. But uh, one of the things that it needs to have is, is decent parking, easy access to it, and uh, uh, obviously uh, access to bathrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, those are like the, the, the biggest criteria. The reason I, I created this meetup was because when I lived in Vegas, so y'all know I lived in Vegas for 18 years. I've been in Raleigh 11 years, or excuse me, 11 months and about two and a half weeks. I got here March 1st, so I'm 
one week away from my anniversary. Uh, before that, I lived in, Vegas, uh, in Las Vegas for 18 years. Now, one of the things pre-COVID in Las Vegas that I really enjoyed was the fact that there was a lot of different meetups that was, that was for educating business owners. Gosh damn it. Yeah. We'll be doing that a lot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> moving you must be true. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know where the sensor is. Apparently we're not moving it, you know. Just wants to keep up one going. But, uh, yeah, I just want to stand up and walk away. Um, now, in, in Vegas, pre-COVID, because again, COVID shut a lot of things down, I used to go on a monthly basis to the SEO meetup, the social media meetup, the WooCommerce meetup, the WordPress meetup, the bloggers meetup, the podcasters meetup, not to count all the networking, speed networking, and other meetups that, that they had going on as well. But the education was the words of reason that I was really focused on. That's how I created my, uh, like Frank and I were talking about this last week, I did not really know much about WordPress until I went to WordPress meetup. Then I started realizing how much I needed to to learn WordPress. Now I know Kyle knows uh, how to do uh, WordPress because we've talked about this before. But um, um, I, what I ended up doing was I, I got when I after going to the WordPress meetup, I, I actually found a three-hour video on how to create a WordPress website. It took me two days, about twelve hour hours to watch that well, three-hour. Didn't you have to go to a bunch of meetups? I went to the meetup so you start getting things, learning things like about, about what, what I talked about last week about SEO. Yeah. I mean, I did not read. I did not read that you need back links, and outbound links, inbound links, internal. Links. I learned that from going to WordPress meetups. Somebody talking about Yoast SEO. Like, oh, okay. So I, so a lot of stuff that I, you know, that I that learned and, and incorporated in my business was actually learned at the at those meetups. Yeah. Um, when I, when by, I by to, the way, I think one thing that people will discover. When I get my app out and they can manage, like they can specifically manage their time. I think I, I'm aghast. There's only 24 hours in a day. We 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 tend to think there's a lot more time than there is. Yeah. Uh, I I just I, I mean, and I've read this too, but I came to that conclusion myself. And you know, you you can't do everything. It's a thing. You got to well, you, once you get to the point where you you have growth, then you you start subcontracting or hiring. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, Kyle can tell because he's got a retail store, and so he's got employees there. He's going to have managers there. He's going to have this is true. Sure. So he can't do it all himself. He can't come to this and still manage his store. It's yeah. impossible. Yeah. So yeah, you have yeah, when you're growing, then you start incorporating other people. So Green and I were kind of talking about this as well. About, you know, property managers first, whatever uh, income properties. Now, Zach, what do you what is it that you do? Um, so I'm here for my side project. I work, work full time uh, for a solar roofing contractor in sales, but okay. I'm building an e-commerce brand. Are, are you guys uh, getting in cahoots with? I forget why Elon calls it, but his solar roof. Oh, Tesla. Tesla. Yeah. yeah. We looked into that this time last year. Elon's got some more work to do. Yeah. Unfortunately. I mean, he needs a more systematic set of mechanics to make it easy to install. He, he needs to not make it so you gotta wait for him to give you materials uh, while the roof is torn off. Uh, and, and also have training that involves sending people to their location and expecting half the training to replicate to a full roofing crew. Yeah, anyway, yeah. I, I got some issues with that. I got excited. I got somebody on the hook for it and it turned out the training was insufficient. It didn't do it. Wow. So, anyway. Interesting. Anyway, that was another conversation. That's another talk, conversation. That was a I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, yeah. No, so, um, so, so <laughs> Well, anyway, that, that's the whole reason I formed this meetup is because I did not see that nobody did this. Anything I saw about small businesses was all about, hey, let's meet at this bar and have a beer and get to know each other. You know, like, yeah. now, how many bars can you go to? How good of a business kind of, how, how do you learn about doing business by going to a Rockstar Connect or some other meetup group or whatever? I mean, yeah. it's, your, your education is going to be limited. So that's why I formed this. It's, wow. it's part of my give back. And my selfish reason for doing this, so I'm going to be 100% transparent. If you like what I do, if you want to maybe set up a time to do a strategy session and see if we can work together, then let's, let's let it go and work together. And then that's how I, you know, that have you bring me one of you guys on as a coaching client. That's one of my, that's one of my coaching takeaways, or you refer me to somebody. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's my coaching reason. So this is kind of a, this $57 special is kind of a seeding mechanism. It's actually uh, all of my courses. <laughs> I mean, I, I do have uh, coaching, which starts about four grand. Uh, for you know, for a private one-on-one -on -one coaching, and that's at the reduced price. And that's we didn't talk about this two up an hour ago. Um, so I, I do offer that. Um, the the courses is so that you may say, oh, well, I really like this. And then say five weeks from now, I release my 
your client um, um, life cycle management system that was the church 197 for they said well this is good information you go and buy this course mm -hmm. or maybe i offer it at a discount of it's normally 197 but for the first three days we're going to offer it at 97 mm -hmm. or something like that yeah okay so this is it is like anybody running a business you may offer a sale to bring people into the door so that you can uh, start doing repeat with the, uh, business with them. So, so anyway, that's my guilty reason uh, for starting this. Now, I I, I do have uh, next month uh, in March, I'm going to be in the same room. So the, the one that we're going to be talking about there on March 13th at 2 o'clock, I'm calling in another tech day. So that means bring in your, your laptops. And this is going to be increasing sales through landing page and sales. Price. So that's going to be, uh, and I'm going to be showing you most of that stuff through Keep. Uh, because that's that's why I build my landing pages. But if you were to decide to go to landingpages.com or some uh, or you uh, if you have a WordPress site, you get a, a landing page plugin, paid or, uh, or free. You can start using it that way as well. So if you don't have to use my system. I will show you mine, then you have to incorporate uh, yours. Now, by a show of hands, who has who has a website that's up and running that they have control over? So you're part of a uh, franchise, so you don't have all that much control. And I know your site is not up, uh, up and running. Okay. <laughs> Let me talk about that. I looked for it. I couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, I looked for it before I call, before I call today, too. Um, so what I'm going to be showing to you, uh, first off, is uh, for those of you who may have some control over your website, and it's going to be something that, uh, that is known as a subdomain. Now, a subdomain is like what it says up there was his birthday three. So, uh, so I'm moving around to the timer didn't go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got the, where's this, HTTPS, uh, birthday three dot optimalformscanning.org. That is known as a subdomain. That's how you can, uh, that's how you can start building stuff onto your site. Another way of doing it is where it says, where you see here where it says strategy or, or, or RM. This could be a subdomain as well. Okay, is one of those preferable for any reason? Uh, it's for like grouping things together. Um, no, now, I mean put it on the putting it on the front or the back end. Uh, correct. And also, the subdomains are for those of you who may not have a WordPress website, and you need to uh, do something like you can be doing some say, like say Facebook ads, in which you need your 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 domain name as part of your Facebook ad, and, and it's going to go to a landing page. And that's what we're, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. okay. So. Essentially, now I'm going to go a little, uh, a little bit into WordPress, and this is something that, that I just did a few uh, over the weekend. So, if, okay, so I'm in my website here. So I talked about we have I have my online classes. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go under services. So notice up in the in the URL it gives my website dot org forward slash online dash classes. Y'all see that? Okay. So if I were to scroll down. I have all of my, here's all of my courses from uh, the Roadmap for, for Business Success, my podcast, which is called Life's Little Lessons, uh, that I call, what I call my credit financial classes, the personal credit creator and writing different business plans, which those of you looking to get outside funding, you, you definitely need, need to get a business plan together. Online program creator, lead magnet generator. So these are all my classes, okay? If I were to go ahead and, and I'm gonna go into WordPress right now. now if you guys have a Wix website or Squarespace website, it's going to be different from that, and I'm not exactly sure how to do it from those perspectives. But I'm going to turn out mine is not Wix; it's Weebly. Okay, they're pretty much the same thing. Yeah, I know, but you just mentioned Wix. I just thought I'd clear that. Okay, so, so I think we talk about Wix or Squarespace. Yeah, I mean, those are like the, the most common two. I've got, now, I've got a big commerce site. Okay, is it uh, WordPress, WooCommerce? No, big, big commerce. Big commerce. Yeah. Okay. It's like Shopify. Just Different logo. Okay. Okay. So it's, a, it's just an online platform where you put your wares and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And they give you the template and I click the buttons and it makes a website. <laughs> um, the, there, there is some uh, power to having your own uh, having your own control uh, of your website. Now I use uh, for hosting. I use a company called SiteGround. Now I do have in a business. Uh, I'm an affiliate with them. If you guys are looking for web hosting. I went with SiteGround back, back in 2016 or 2017, and that was back when, and Kyle would probably correct me if I'm wrong, but right, right around that time, time frame, uh, Google started uh, putting penal basically penalties on websites that, did, that were not secured, that did not have an SSL uh, certificate. 
You realized this last week. When you you realized it. Thank you. And I, I went out and fixed it. It was very simple. Because you know, when, we, when I went to your website up here, it says yeah. dangerous, a potentially yeah. dangerous website. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's people that say. Shady that's, cat. Yeah. <laughs> um, so back then, there was, uh, Google was actually demoting people that, even though they had a very strong website, it was not secure. Even though you may not be selling anything, it, it became a higher risk. Um, back then, GoDaddy, that's the site the company I was with, decided to say, hey, if you want an SSL certificate, it's going to be an extra 100 or $150. Mine was free at Weaver, by the way. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, on SiteGround, the lady that got me to turn over to SiteGround said, hey, uh, the, the SSL is free. So I'm paying less per month than GoDaddy, and I had a free certificate. So I jumped ship, and, uh, and I left GoDaddy since. Now, not to say there's anything wrong with GoDaddy. I, you know, I love it. They, I thought their fees were a little bit too high. Their customer service was, in my particular opinion, was phenomenal. If you wanted to call them at Saturday night on, on Christmas Day at 7 p.m. at night, wow. somebody answered the phone. Wow. So That's customer good. experience, in my, from my experience, the few times that I called them, was phenomenal. Yeah. So, I mean, I would not knock them for that whatsoever. Um, but anyway, I, 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 I'm using SiteGround right now. Last week, I think I talked about, uh, after attending an SEO online uh, class, there was uh, two other uh, platforms. One was called A2 or A2 Hosting. The other one was called Green Geeks. Now, supposedly, the, those two websites, uh, was the way they're set up, that they're actually uh, they're much stronger as far as their performance is concerned for a mobile uh, uh, for mobile uh, search. So, I so you're looking at your search. I started searching for a host site. There are so many. Yeah. There are so many. I found a big chart on Reddit that was pretty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, and, and, and I'm not, I'm not opposed to jumping ship from my uh, site grant. You know, if, if I find a two hosting or green geeks, what's better from the mobile services? Because sixty percent of people's uh, searches are on, on a mobile phone. So what? I, I don't even know what that means. That it's better for mobile. Do you have any idea? It is it's performance. Or if Kyle, okay, I'm, I'm not as versed on that as I think Kyle might be. I don't know. Well, basically, what happens is. Uh, Roughly 15 years or so ago, when the mobile phone development started coming out and people were browsing the internet on their phones, the idea was to have a desktop website that was you know, big, full screen, all that stuff, and then you would have a secondary website that was a uh, shrunken version that would fit on a mobile device. Right. Uh, in a, in uh, a portrait mode. Right. right. Well, about 10 years or so ago, using the different technologies of CSS3 when they introduced media queries, the idea of having one centralized site to do everything became very popular. And so there are a lot of hosting services out there that have their own built-in systems, like a version of WordPress that can easily take your content and reorganize it and restructure okay. it. Yeah. So it fits better on a phone than it does on a, a wide screen. Right. right. Yeah. Now, if you're on your Weebly site, you, you're probably going to see somewhere on there, there's going to be like a little laptop and like a little tablet and then on a cell phone. So the, the, how does your website look on these different devices? So that's... I have not seen that, but it, it does a pretty good job of adapting it. To, to both uh, formats, actually. Well, there should be some kind of view, uh, a preview form where you see it on the different devices. Because sometimes, um, I, I know with some um, uh, drag and drop um, uh, website builders, sometimes you, you can say disable this on, on mobile or disable this on desktop because it may not actually always. Yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't noticed. I would assume the code is actually getting gotten a lot better, but I would, I would, but you still can look yeah. at it on a different. For example, for me, and I don't know, because I'm still learning WordPress, um, when I'm on my website um, on, on a cell phone, if I have a fifth menu item up here, it, it just looks all, kind, all kinds of funky. Yeah. So, uh, so I keep everything on just on the four menus. So I, I'm sure it's a setting of some sort. It's like when I, when I came in here, I says, you know what, I'm gonna do uh, this thing for our business affiliates, I was gonna create that as a different menu item. And then it just made it made it look funky on, on the cell phone. Oh, no, that's going to go under service. <laughs> that was my default. <laughs> I know it works there or not. Um, so anyway, um, so in, uh, so with the with the subdomain, that's going to be something where you. Uh, I'll, I'll just show you what it looks like on a Word, uh, WordPress website. If y'all recall last week, first this book, obviously we're going to have Frank. If I were to go under here where it says pages, and these are all my web pages that, that I have. Uh, okay, what, what is the thing you got on the screen right now? What is this? The, this is all my this is all my pages on my website. This is where I can go there and edit each page. 
Uh, this, this, this is, is a WordPress. WordPress. This is WordPress. You're right, you're right in WordPress. Uh, I'm in WordPress right now. Okay, okay. Um, so what I end up doing over the weekend, if you if you may recall, because I talked about you just duplicate a page and then just, just go change the content on it for the SEO. Right. Um, if that if you recall all of everything under here, and I'm gonna sc scroll down a little bit. You may recall I had course dash beside this our business. It's course dash that so I was I was keeping everything together. So yeah, in yeah. preparation of this class is I wanted to go ahead and put all of these classes, all of these courses under the online classes. So what that does is, is that now for, as far as categories are concerned, let me go ahead and go to online classes. And this is just part of your group. Now, I don't, it doesn't matter which one I pick, I'm gonna pick more information on any, on any of my courses. And you'll see instead of being, instead of being the uh, person, uh, Dot org personal credit creator is now uh, it's now under this one domain it's on one, one subdomain so I, I, I'm now grouping all of my stuff together under uh, the category that I want them to, that, that I want them to be found so I can have so for you and your uh, if you're doing your work or your website or let's say you're having a shop or something like that you're going to start giving uh, describing information on, on the, the, the different services you may have this is your website forward slash services forward slash and then you talk about whatever that service is rather than just everything coming off the everything just coming off the URL so when you set that up does WordPress automatically generate those URLs for you yes and no I mean you uh, so with that what happens there is as an example if I was going to be uh, working with this course here the crafting your transformation store which is what I just released the other day um, the first thing that I did was I, would, I, would go, I went inside my um, one of my editors, either my block editor or my classic editor. Actually, I can even I need to be a classic. Um, so on, on the right hand side here, I'm going to say the parent page is going to be online classes. Okay. So when I say it was on, on, online classes, that now just put it into that one subcategory. Everything's now under that one under that one page. I can put this into whichever one that I want. So I'm gonna just put it under classroom as an example, just so I can show you that I'm changing that one subcategory. So I'll get the update, so it's, it's now going to save. That was crafting your transformation story. So if I were to go here, I'm gonna do a reload, because I was gonna make sure everything that took. Uh, if I go to under, uh, crafting your transformation story, instead of being online classes for slash, it should now say classrooms. If I did it right. So you see right there? Now I, I just put it to that one subcategory. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's the, so what this does is it helps you group everything together for, for the different things that you're gonna be providing. Does, is one of your classes about WordPress? It is not. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be. I'd be okay with sitting down uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, going over the beginning uh, aspects of doing WordPress. WordPress changes a lot. I mean, on a just like any, just like any e-commerce site or anything, those things are constantly being updated. So anything, anything that I created today will be updated by next week. Okay. All right. So I can just show you what I've learned. I have a little bit of contempt for that. No, really, I'm serious. I think you know. People talk about doing your MVP. Don't don't make it too too. You know, don't work too much on it. I think it's much better to sincerely work through, get a philosophy, you know, a uh, architecture, so that it's it's solid. So you don't have to keep screwing around with it all the time. I'm sorry, it's my rant number fifty three. Go ahead. <laughs> Welcome to technology. <laughs> well, yeah. So if you're doing anything online, the thing is, I mean, even with your cell phone. How many times does it, does your phone have to update certain apps on a on a, on a regular basis? Not that much. Mm -hmm. But I will say that a lot of the documentation that you find, it never matches the current state of the song. And uh, whenever you you're looking at like YouTube videos and stuff like that, one thing that I've learned is I if I'm going to learn how to do something new, I always look at the date of the recording. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I do too. So is anything more than a year old? I, I question. You know who Sam Altman is? He's a he's co-founder of uh, Y Combinator, and uh, he's a, like the CEO of OpenAI that makes ChatGPT. 
I've seen, seen some of his old videos. His and, and my philosophies uh, coincide a lot, and he is not a big fan of this MVP kick it out as quick as you can. So I'll be glad to see that. Well, I mean, they, I mean, it's all up to you. Like when I create my programs, I mean, they literally take me ten times as long as somebody else would take it. Yeah. Okay. Because exactly. you're thinking through. Well, not only am I thinking through it, because if you watch the programs, I'm not standing in front of the camera. Blah blah. blah. I'm not the talking head. Yeah. Most other people just want to knock stuff out there. They don't care about audio quality. They just yeah. they get the stuff out there. I would go and write the script. Right. I would go and then record the script. And this is my stuff is a slideshow. Then I go and find the slides. I edit the slides. Then I put it into a movie uh, mm -hmm. editing program. And then I, you know, I mix them all together. Yeah. So, so for me to create a 30 minute program probably would take me about eight or nine hours. Right. Good. If not, if not 16. I will try to re re refrain from my hours, so go ahead. No, no, it's okay. Um, now, in my opinion, when you start having these subdomains, and then you, uh, and then uh, when Google's uh, spiders, like we talked about last week, start going uh, and, and searching your stuff, to me, that shows this could be more relevant, rather than just saying everything is just, uh, it's just off of one page. Now, one of the worst things I can see people do are the one page website. Now, people swear by them. Not a big fan because it's just not much to, uh, to, uh, to the website. So they don't get a, as good as a SEO, uh, SEO rank? I, I would assume they do not. I mean, Kyle can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think if your website is more organized, then that it shows to be more relevant. That's that's how I look at it. But maybe you can differ or say something. It's more about depth. Obviously, if you have a one page website, that's meant to be more of a landing page than a standalone website. Um, the more depth your, your your site has, the better it can return for search, uh, search engine results. However, if it, yeah, it is too deep, then that could count against you. So, like, you know, if you have 10 or 15 pages, that's great. If you have 5,000, then it's going to count against you. Yeah. Wow. Go to extremes in either direction. Yeah, pretty much. Just create a new website <laughs> for the extra content. Yeah. Okay. Well, and yeah, and yeah, and, and you can do an app out and link between the two. <laughs> sure SEO is for that one too. Well, because you now you got some cross links. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you you may notice I've got this on here is the difference between going to Facebook.com and then going to M.Facebook.com. Well, the M dot is going to be the mobile version of, of, of Facebook. So you, on your cell phone, you're going to the mobile version. But, and if you notice, if you try to go on your cell phone to Facebook.com, not using their app, you're going to have a completely different experience on your phone. So how do you get somebody to use the appropriate uh, version? Well, I'm just talking about that kind of as, as subdomains, because this could be how, how the algorithms are uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty different. If I can jump in for a second. Sure. Um, usually when it comes to user experience, you don't get the user <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't get the... The option. Oh, yeah. uh, right. So the, the, the code in the site would detect whether or not you're using a mobile version or not, and it'll either redirect or load the appropriate version. So that way the, the user should not have to think about which one they need to use. That makes uh, sense. Sometimes you can override it if you know what you're doing, such as m.facebook.com, but using most people that go to that on their you know, cell phone, either. Using the app. Well, whether the app or not, if you can load it in the browser, uh, you can force it to load that specific one, it, and it may make the choice for you. Yeah. And with the technology, because if you start looking at, say, at analytics, I mean, the analytics, the basic analytics are going to tell you if someone's coming to you on a desktop, on a mobile device, or whatever. So, I mean, that's just, and that's been wrong for, for a few years. Now, one of the things that, that, that I do a lot as well is also what is known as a, a redirect. Basically, to me, a redirect is when they go to a certain website, uh, like say, for example, the optimalperformanceacademy.org forward slash strategy, and that, that website does not exist. That, that is a redirect. That will actually redirect you to a calendar on Keep to schedule an appointment. But instead of saying, hey, go to this Keep dot forward slash hashtag, you know, all that stuff, is I prefer having a lot more control over those by having them actually go through a website that I can control. And who implements the redirect? The person that that was the website. And how do they do that? 
Now, again, I, I mean, I can show you the, the, the WordPress way. I'm sure Wix and others have, have this the same version. But I will show you how it works, at least in WordPress. And then you can, uh, you know, then you can do a, a YouTube video or go to the help session on Wix or Weebly or whatever, yeah. how they do. Because each website, is, I'm sure it's going to be somewhat similar, but it's also going to be somewhat different. So I, I cannot. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So the thing, when I talked about WordPress and, uh, and when I first as I was going to the SEO uh, meetups uh, back in Vegas, uh, 2019 and before, there were sa the, the, the word that was saying by the uh, social media uh, meetup was that about 33 to 36 percent of all websites in the world in the world were WordPress. I'm at 37. 30, 33 to 36 percent. Now their market share was increasing over time. I think now is at uh, just shy of 43 percent. So it's gone up. So they're taking over one to two percent of the world's websites, additional every single year. Mm. Well, so to me, uh, as people are starting to see the the diversity of using a WordPress site versus a Wix or Weebly or Squarespace, uh, I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those. If you're just getting started, to, to do it that way. Um, there's pros and cons, and I always say with, with WordPress, one of the uh, one of the pros is. It's like having a smartphone. That's just kind of what, it's like having a smartphone, and you. And you say, I want that new little plugin or that new little app because it does that. And therefore, now on WordPress, it's called a plugin. Mm -hmm. So let me get that plugin that does, you know, that, does that same kind of thing. When you're not using a WordPress site, sometimes those extra features are just not even going to be available. Yeah. That's why I like WordPress. Now, because of that. Um, there's also this thing called a white screen of death. <laughs> I'm sure you know what that is. Well, it's happened to me twice, uh, where I downloaded a, a plugin that was not compatible with another plugin, and basically all I got was a white screen. Oh, I go to my website. When I try to log in, I couldn't log in. So That's what uh, my website looks like now. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I mean, there, how how I fix that? And this is what again, this is pre-COVID. How I learned to do this is I had to go to my hosting company. And basically log into my uh, log into my hosting company, and then basically deactivate uh, all, all my plugins. Now, how I did that was I just go there, create a new folder. I call it like this is this called as soon as it says plugins, I create another folder called plugins two, and just move everything over. And so now that now now that the, because the URL is different, the, the, now they're no longer bothered. Then you have to start unactivating. It's it's and a that was that, that incompatibility was not ever. Well, the thing is, I mean, it, like every single app that you download from your Google uh, Play Store, from uh, whatever it's called in uh, Android and iPhones, not every app, not every app on your phone may be compatible with another app. Is there a one or more centralized places for WordPress, WordPress that people go to exchange information with? Yeah, there's forums. There's other things. Yeah. I've, I've not really gone to them. Okay. Yeah, there's going to be. Just do WordPress forms. Yeah. Um, now the the app or the plugin that I use that I that I started using a while ago uh, for WordPress is what it's called. And maybe you can tell me something different if you like something different. Um, is is one is called Pretty Links. Now, when you have a WordPress site, quite often, whenever you download a new plugin, it's good. The, the, the feature of that plugin is going to appear here on the left-hand side, and, very, and sometimes they're even going to appear here on the top. Like I think I talked about this, that's the three, three of the most uh, important programs you can have. One of them is going to be up, uh, Update Plus. That's what you back up your, your, your website before you go and add any plugins or you update a plugin. Um, and so the one that I use is called Pretty Links. Now Pretty Links is actually very straightforward. And essentially I can add a new plugin, or excuse me, I can add a new uh, redirect whenever I want. And here's the power of the redirects. I'm gonna go here where it says, uh, where it says strategy. It's gonna be on one of the older ones. It's gonna say, oh, it's got three pages there.
Okay, so this is part of this is the second uh, 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 redirect that I've created since I created this website about nine months ago. And essentially, well, if you were just getting started, you would just hit add new up there, but I'm not going to hit add new. I'm just going to hit edit because this will be the that I created it. And this is what I call that. This is what I call that link. This is the name that I give it. The, I'm the only one that's going to see this. This is when I'm on the preview links uh, 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 plugin. This is, this is what I see. Now, which inside here, you're going to make sure that it's going to be temporary or permanent. Now, from, from what I have studied, from what I've uh, done, is that if it's going to be going to basically an outside, uh, an external link, an outbound link, that it should be considered as a temporary, because that's how when, when the spiders out there are crawling your website. Uh, in my, the way I would found is that the, the, it, it, we should have it always as a temporary. And also from uh, between a 307 and a 302, my research basically was saying that the 307 is better, because isn't 307 like, in case it's in between HTTP, HTTPS, and, and they convert between those two, or? That's a different thing. Oh, okay. So what's, what's the difference between 307 and 302? Well, the, the 302 is basically the uh, HTTP code for found, whereas 307 is a temporary redirect, basically saying that the uh, content exists and it's used somewhere else, but the header of the actual information is not changed. Okay. And what, which, uh, which between the two would you say is better if we go to an external site? Uh, Personally, I use 301 all the time. 301? Yeah. No, it's for, for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, for me, a, a temporary redirect would be if you're setting up like a temporary site of a, not exactly a, a redirect landing page, but more of I'm sending you to this page so that I can build the content and actually you know, get everything going on. If you're going to do a, a short link to a redirect URL, then I recommend a 301, at least from my experience. Okay. Okay. Okay, and so you heard it from Kyle. He's a lot more tech savvy than I am. Kyle, what is your background that you know all this stuff? Uh, 20 years of web development. Oh, wow. So, PHP, MySQL, HTML, CSS, you name it, I do it. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Cool. Cool. <laughs> I mean, for right now, Kevin's talking about WordPress, and, and WordPress is a great system for people that don't know what they're doing for websites. No offense. Um, <laughs> then it gets anyone on the internet within a few clicks, which is great. And I started developing before WordPress even, you know, started up. So I, I was actually hard coding on the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript way before libraries existed, and trying to do simple things like, you know, make a sound play when an email came in. Mm -hmm. uh, WordPress kind of killed my business for that, and mm -hmm. they had a right to do so. Uh, but my prim my primary experience is professional web development uh, for all those languages, which I still do on a common basis, just not professionally. So, do you use tools like WordPress, or do you still code on the metal, so to speak? I mean, do you, you still work directly in HTML, CSS? Directly, yes. WordPress is nice, but WordPress is very hard to configure to do what you want it to do if you know what you want it to do. So, have you can you use WordPress to get a first version and then go in and tweak it or not? Honestly, I find that twice the work. Yeah. I mean, if I can go ahead and start programming what I need and understand the concepts of what the user experience and the user interface will be, then honestly, Building it in WordPress, you're, you're using a whole different set of uh, skill sets, and then the actual do the coding. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I start off with basically a, a pencil wire thing, like I just draw it on a piece of paper and right. I just go from there. Okay. Two different, and I'm sure valid. Well, he's, got, he's got a lot more experience uh, in, in this than I do because I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a, your website developer guy. I would never be the one that would even consider well trying to do your website. My, my whole thing is, you know, getting your business started, your website is one of your tools. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Your absolutely. So, um, so in, uh, anyway, if you were doing this, th this way, <laughs> um, so, so, so under here, after you, you put 307 or, or 301, 301 meaning a permanent, then you want to put, the, what is your target URL? That is a, so right here, um, that's going to be where you're going to put it. So it's going to be, when they go to the, that forward slash whatever, um, this is the actual website that they're going to be going to. And then below that, that's going to be uh, the actual thing, that, that's going to be the actual redirect that you're going to be using. So you have full control over that. The reason I liked this is back uh, when I first developed this website, this was actually going to go to a commonly uh, uh, email or uh, scheduling uh, program. Right now, because I became a, a, a person with Keep, 
uh, this is actually now going through uh, a, a key uh, affiliate. So therefore, now it goes to, it goes through that. So instead of me saying I can go and recreate a whole new a bunch of business cards because my URL change, you know, my calendar URL change. All I'm doing is I'm changing it as far as the uh, the redirect is concerned. That's 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 to me how I saw the uh, the benefit of it. Can I ask how a question? Sure, go ahead. When when somebody uses a redirect. If you were to look at the URL, would there be some special syntax in there that says this is a redirect? As far as syntax, what do you mean? Is there anything in there that says this is not a literal URL, but this thing on the end here is special, it's a redirect? Uh, from the user standpoint, they won't know the difference. No, I understand that. Right. Somebody's got to look at that and know that that's not well, a for, URL. So for an example, if you type that into your URL browser, it will go to uh, let the, the let's meet.io as highlighted right there. So but, when you type it in, then you'll see, oh, it, it, it got sent to another site. Then you, you as a user will see that it was a um, thing. So for an example, if I were to go to Optimal Performance Academy forward slash strategy, I type that in right now. You already see that it's that keep.app is redirected to another website. And now there's, there's my calendar. But from a user standpoint, just looking at the URL, there's no way for you to know that yeah, it is that's right. right. That's right. Well, I don't really care. That doesn't really explain it to me, but I will trust the system. That's fine. So, yeah. So, well, the thing is for me, and this is how I you know for me doing business, because I do create a whole bunch of online courses and stuff like that. I like using the redirects only oh, because I'm sure they're great. only because I can give you something really, really simple and then I can have to do whatever I wanted to do. Like all of my courses, um, like uh, the RM one, uh, that's going to take you to a landing page. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a roadmap. Right. Right. Roadmap for business success. If you were to do it, instead of put RM there, you put in forward slash OPC, that would take you to my information page for my online program creator. I don't have to tell you, go to the opa.org forward slash online dash classes forward slash online dash program dash forward slash OPC and it'll automatically send you there. From, so. from an under the hood standpoint, I have a feeling that somebody resolves that URL as far as they can. You go there and then in, there in a way, the way and Kyle can correct me if I'm wrong, in a way I'm using that redirect as kind of like a short link. Sure. Like if you would go to a bit the bit dot lead short link. And it gives you a, a an eight digit uh, yeah. uh, eight character code. I'm doing it all just through my website. Yeah. I'm going to quit speculating. Uh, it's not really productive. But yeah, I, I'm an engineer, and I really I I learn better if I understand the un underlying concepts. Yeah. yeah. So, just to to wrap this up, um, again, from a user standpoint, there's no way to determine just looking at a URL if it is. But on the back end side. The uh, HTTP codes that we're talking about, if it sees a, a 307 code or a 301 code, then it says, hey, there's a temporary redirect, where do I need to go now? Okay, so that's the thing I'm looking for. It doesn't say 307 in the, no, in the URL. Correct. It, 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 and it won't here. even see it in the destination URL. It's not going to show that either. Yeah. Right. Okay, all right. And yeah. then the, the server that's producing the result will tell the, the client computer, what if I were to go to, uh, to his website, you know, the OPA.org slash strategy, then my computer would say, hey, there's, there's a 307 redirect, where do I need to go now? And it'll send me that header information. So technically, all that's taken care of on the back end using the headers of the actual uh, page itself, which is separate than the content. Is that a part of uh, the HTTP protocol? Uh, that is, yes. Okay. Wow. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I can move on. <laughs> Zach, any questions for you? <laughs> you gotta cry. How do I get my dropshipping website to make money? <laughs> that is why I'm here. Okay. I have this many visitors on a site that has a good product with a nice attractive web page. I do not have enough visitors. Okay. And I've paid for free Facebook ads, I've gotten plenty of people, and as soon as the ad stops, no visitors. Now, uh, with because uh, I'm, I'm running an ad campaign right now for the birthday bundle. Okay. Uh, so that I'm actively going through that right now. Now, now the thing is, you know, what is it? What does your Facebook ad look like? And then, are you tracking through analytics when they come to your, or can you track through the analytics when they're coming to your shopping cart? How many people are, are landing there, and then how many people could actually buy? Yeah, you, know, you will see that that, that those are not the same numbers. Yeah, no, they're not. The the analytics say that the um, 
ads variously are reaching between 20 and 50,000 potential people. Mm -hmm. Actual clicks are more than the hundreds. Like, okay. I mean, you gotta scatter it wide. Um, and do you run the reports on Facebook to look at those, uh, which ads is performing better or not? And this is yeah. kind of outside the account. No, this is yeah. great stuff. This is, this this is, is interesting. Yeah. This is the this first is uh, experience I've had with Facebook ads. And their people have been, have been helpful. They have a free ad consultant that'll call you for a series of, of phone calls to help yeah. walk you through how to set it up. So my first experience with it, they were great. Yeah, I, I just actually, I, I'm I speaking to a guy named like Rashawn right now. Yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, the, Whichever guy I talked to is, is pretty good. Um, I'm trying to find the analytics page on my host site. Do you mind me asking how much the ads were? The, the, the five dollars a day. Oh. No, um, no. I've been toying with a different concept instead of doing it per day. Yeah. Is I do the uh, the lifetime. Yeah, the total spend. Yeah. Which for me was thirty five a piece. Okay. Paying for it for a week, just seeing how it performs. Yeah. Okay. Getting trying a new product and then trying it again. Um, so I mean, that's the thing with Facebook ads. I mean, this uh, when the word the words beta testing comes in, yeah. you got to test so much stuff, oh, yeah. and then you got to look at your analytics from Facebook. Oh yeah, no like, doubt. Like when I started uh, posting my program, I was showing showing like uh, thirty and, and older. Do you do you know what? And, and, and Facebook, when they give you your analytics, it's going to be whatever five, like twenty five to thirty five, twenty five to thirty four, thirty five to forty. That's how they that's how they show their analytics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, is when I, when I was uh, posting my courses and, it, and even when I was doing my, my webinar for, for roadmap, my analytics, even though I was doing thirty and older, most of the people that were uh, that were clicking on the uh, on the ad was fifty five and older, fifty five to sixty four and sixty five plus. Mm -hmm. So I was like, why am I spending money on the forty year olds? That's, I mean, yeah. no, I'm getting no clicks. <laughs> so that's that's a, that, that's a wasted demographic right now. And it could be that a lot of people that are on Facebook, and like they're, and they're 40 or younger, they're on Instagram, they're on, they're on another platform. So somehow in in my Facebook ad spend, I had three, three Facebook ads, 35 a piece, hitting a lot of people um, by the Facebook numbers. I mean, saying one ad got up to like 50,000 impressions, which is not necessarily unique to people, but anyway. Several tens of thousands of potential like scrollers, you know. Um, out of that, I got between October first of last year and today, I've had five hundred seventy-three site visits. Okay. What, what is your product again? Um, it's an e-commerce site uh, selling fitness equipment. Fitness. Okay. So barbells, weights, right. squat racks, that kind of thing. Um, five hundred seventy-three visitors. 292 of which shopped, 189 added to cart. Uh, oh, that's good. That's more demographics there. All of which were abandoned. Um, what? I, I don't understand it. I have 185 abandoned carts. People clicked, they added, and then they went away and did something else. Have you tried buying something on your own site just to see how it works? Yeah, I've done a couple of them. And the first two, I had to switch credit card processors because the credit card processing was really funky. Who did you use Stripe? Or? Um, so I started using, uh, what was it? PayPal Braintree plugin. Um, do not recommend because they don't have a phone call help line. It's all email. I can get back to you in 48 hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have a billing problem now. <laughs> so I switched over to, um, what was it? I was just. <laughs> Guessing. Yeah. <laughs> I switched over to a plugin. I can't remember the name of the plugin, but the, I was a friend that works locally that has a credit card processing company, and I had to pay for a portal to use his company. So it currently costs monthly to keep the portal open, which is frustrating, but it means that I can have him run the credit card processing, which means I have a phone call. I can call somebody that I know who can help me with a problem. The problem is the cost benefit doesn't work out for filling me monthly for the portal open. So anyway, I, I've, I've always had very good experience with Stripe. That's been my uh, online process. Point being, it, it works. I've bought you know, I've bought uh, a test dollar product. You know, in my credit card, and it goes all the way through. You know, it just. Which is like, for, for example, when I was doing the birthday bundle, one of the first things I did was I, I bought my own program. Mm -hmm. Right. Guess what? It cost me 57 bucks. Guess what? I'm getting 54 of it back. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting people's emails? 
before, or well, the, do you get a lot of that? It's, yeah, I've just, I just from a tea that. shopper, yeah. I will put something in my cart yeah. at a site, and I will leave it there, and I yeah. will wander off. It helps that they'll send me a coupon, Yeah, a coupon code. Yeah. I don't know what that entails. That's a big deal, probably. Yeah. So I, I, within the past like two weeks, I found a uh, pop-up plugin that I could, when people first come to the site, offer them like a five percent off coupon using their email. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I think I put it up a little too late after my ad finished running, so I got to do another one and try it out. It's hard to figure out. Well, and does this does this platform have an an, an abandoned cart campaign? Uh, I think so. It. Uh, in order to do a like a raw abandoned cart campaign, they want me to bump to some extra tier or whatever. They have one if somebody signs up for an account and they actually put their email address in to capture it. But they got to put their email in. Mm -hmm. They don't put their email in, nothing happens. Because so. uh, one of the things I've been testing, on, even on the birthday bundle that I'm running right now, mm -hmm. that's why it's birthday three because I have multiple different landing pages. Um, is uh, I was testing like uh, any your name first name, mm -hmm. email, and then click the button. Yeah. And I'm going down to email and then click the button. Two days ago, click the button. <laughs> I don't need your name, I don't need your email. Mm -hmm. You click the button, I'm, I'm, I'm getting your information through the credit card processing service. Yeah. yeah. So why, why, why am I having to do those extra steps? Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's, I mean, Kyle, Kyle does um, online cards as well. I mean, he's, I'm sure you, I know, I, I'm a bad card. <laughs> but, um, Anyway, well, one of, one of the things that I, I, I wanted to go into, again, going back to the subdomains, and this is going to be different for different people's uh, websites, but what are, excuse me, hosting companies. But I, I, when I created the, the HTTPS force, uh, colon four slash four slash upper day three dot OPA, that was actually specifically for um, uh, landing pages. That was created specifically for a landing page. Now, this is what I'm going to be talking about next week a little bit. So I want to go ahead and go inside Keep. This is the, or, uh, this is the platform that I use. So let me back up one. So I'm going to go ahead, ahead and go into my automations. I just moved. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've got my, my birthday bundle. This is the automation. This is kind of a precursor to uh, next month's uh, uh, content. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this uh, this landing page or, 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 or this sequence. And this is where, to me, is probably one of the most important things uh, on this on, on the redirects. Now I've got this one here. It says landing page new birthday four. I'm going to actually change that title to um, because it's not birthday four. Birthday four doesn't exist. Um, um, so I'm going to go here where it says birthday three. So this this uh, this landing page here, this little circle there, is a landing page people are going to be going to, and I'm linking it to birthday three up there. Okay, so this is when you guys are starting to create your your ads. If you're doing it through uh, a key, this is going to be a very important step for you to actually take. Plus, if you go start doing Facebook ads, from my experience, whichever account that you're creating your your account with on Facebook, because you have to have a personal page and a business page to create them then to, uh, to do a Facebook ad, is that the URL that you're setting up with your Facebook ads needs to be, in, in what I've heard, needs to be linked to the, uh, to the URL that you're going to be sending them to in, uh, in, the, um, in the ad. Now, this is going, since mine is going to an outside source, I have to kind of force it to go to, uh, to, a, to a part of my website. You mean outside of Facebook? Outside of my website. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. So By the way, I love that user interface there. It's graphic. Yeah. I mean, they could have made that much cheaper and had maybe a list oh. thing. This is, this is, I think that's a great interface there. The key, uh, I mean, I, I mean, it's maybe a little bit more expensive, but the thing is, I mean, I, I can create landing pages here, sales pages. This is my email sequences. I can, it's like you saw me tag the three of you guys uh, in the course. I can create this where it says here, add a tag, a tag applied. So of course, so you bought, so Zach can go there, go uh, to one of my landing pages at two o'clock in the morning and you will have that course at 201. Hmm. It's all automated. By the way, I've been working on getting, what is that, Mosbro? Or the, the, uh, the uh, plugin for, uh, that does SEO analytics, Mosbro, is that it? Well, anyway, that, you can show it to us. I don't remember anything. So when they changed the whole look of the page and it showed like your YouTube video was like nine out of ten. Oh, uh, keywords everywhere. 
the, 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 uh, the Google extension keywords everywhere. No, it wasn't. There's a red K and a black K. Anyway, that thing is, is pretty cheap. <laughs> but it probably works great, you know, once you get it going. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this landing page, just so you guys can see what I'm, what I'm doing. And then I'm going to show you how to set it up. So this is uh, their old landing page builder. I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, gearing toward the, their, their new one. But if you were to go to birthday three, this is the exact landing page you're going to see. Now I'm in edit, I'm in the edit format, so I can go and, and, and make the changes. So what, what I'm doing here, I put the data. There's a cost. That's why I have my. Uh, I could probably take the name of uh, that out. That's why you have it because um, I'm using a different one. And then these are the courses designing the lead magnet online. All, all the courses that uh, that are given to you then the testimonials. So what what I'm doing here is. Once you uh, enter your information on this page, the next thing is I can send them to a thank you page or I can send them to another URL. And that's not the point of this class. So I'm just, uh, so I'm just going to gloss over that for right now. So if I'm going to hit continue here, this is actually going to where I can publish for the first time or republish any changes that, that I made. So I'm going to hit republish here so I don't get the error code that comes up. Now again, we're talking about this next week. Now, what I can do here is at the when I slide down to the bottom, that's the actual URL to the landing page. Okay? Mm -hmm. I can copy that and I can save it. However, I'm not going to be using that in my Facebook ad. I'm not going to be using that in my Google ad. I'm not going to be using that in any of my ads. I'm going to actually go ahead and create a subdomain and I'm going to call it birthday3.optimalformsacademy.org. I'm sorry, Kevin, is this on Keep or is this on WordPress? This is on Keep. Okay. Okay, we're on Keep right now. Now when, now, when it does this, does it, is that a matter of working with your, your hosting provider? Yes, and we'll be doing that in a moment. Okay. Because that's what has to be done before this step. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and unlink this, just so, um, just so they're, they're no longer linked together. Okay. So I already, I've go, already went to SiteGround and I created that subdomain on my hosting platform. So that's gonna be done before this. But I'm, show, I'm showing you kind of backwards so you can see what the end result is and then how then we're gonna go how to set that up. So that thing that was doing your hosting, was that a tool that was specifically working with, what was the name of your company's site? Um, the name of my company is Optum. Uh, no, 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 your hosting company. Uh, SiteGround. SiteGround. Does that work specifically with SiteGround? It should work specifically with any hosting company. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do it in SiteGround, and then it should be something similar in GoDaddy or Bluehost or whichever. Oh, but uh, this is a tool provided by SiteGround. It, I'm going to show you how to do it in SiteGround, yeah, yeah. and I'm going to assume that it's a tool that's going to be provided by any hosting okay. service. Okay. Right. So is I want to make sure I'm answering your exact question. <laughs> is this why you have to pay for multiple? Because uh, I know you had a, a cluster. You didn't just pay for one. All this, is, all, all, or is it all keep is, uh, keep itself is not free, but uh, if I, I can create an unlimited number of landing pages, I can have an unlimited number of subdomains. With Keep, I can have an unlimited number of landing pages on Keep, and I can uh, uh, have them contact with any number of unlimited uh, uh, subdomains that I create on site ground. Okay, because I know when we look at site ground, you could get one, or you could get two to ten. Whatever. Correct. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, once you once you've done it a couple of times, then, then I can come back and I'll I'll, I'll do this part a second time. Like this would be one of the ten. Yeah. 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 That's what. I'm so so right now I'm going to go in and I've already done this on site ground. I'm going to type in birthday three. Dot optimal. I don't know. So again, I've already created the site, uh, the, the subdomain on SiteGround. I'm going to show you that in a moment. Because if, it, if, I, if, I, if I did this, let's call it uh, uh, five, as an example, I'm just going to show you, or 35, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm using one that does not exist on SiteGround. I'll go ahead and, and, and click connect. Now, if you're doing a, uh, if you are doing a different kind of landing pages .net or .com, whatever it's called now, or some other ones, um, if you can find out if you can do these subdomains, to me, this will be very, very helpful. 
But anyway, I'm going to, this is, I need, I need to go to Cloudflare or GoDaddy name cheap. Uh, there's already some example pro providers. And then I have to go and create these two different links here. I got uh, the text at and then fusion site uh, verification because TAR 516. That's my code for the key. The TAR 516. What's that? That's my birthday. It's funny how your birthday just pops right And then that's the C name that I'm going to have to create in a, uh, in a few moments. So I'm going to say, well, now I'm going to go and check what's called my DNS status. I forget what DNS stands for. I'm sure Kyle. And you'll see that, oh my gosh, it's, it's showing up a red X all over the place. So it's, that means it's not, that means it is not on my site ground platform. So I have to go there and create it. And since I know that it's, uh, um, that So these are service, servers that, uh, it's, it's, site, what is it, site? It's, these are the DNS I brought, it's, it's, it's okay. checking across the world as far as that, this, what they call the propagation checker. Yeah. And it's yeah. showing that this, this is error, error, error all over the place. It's funny you got them on the East Coast and the West Coast. Of the United States. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out, and um, and then I'm going to go with one that I know does work. I'm going to just, actually I'm going to refresh this page because I don't want to keep anything. Mm -hmm. you know. Okay. So again, I'm going to connect my custom uh, domain. Yeah, because I, I didn't want anything to be captured or saved or anything here. Yeah, sure. Because I'm not doing any of this in. Reconnect. Did I miss a word? Oh. But you still need an N in the form, but A N C. So I'm going to refresh the page again so I can get that connect button to work again. I have blocks. So so if, if everything is correct, then everything should look fine. So again, I'm going to go back down here. And uh, check my DNS uh, status. And I got, all, I got my green arrows. You get a couple of these little red X's every once in a while. So I close that out, and I'm going to go ahead and send verify. You're not too concerned about. That. I'm not too concerned about. That. So right now, if I were to go to that website, the, the birthday three, and I copy pasted it, so if I were to go there right now, it's going to. Oop. <laughs> Can, can your web pages be seen all over the world? Yes. Well, no. Well, I mean, China. In China. Uh, yeah, I know. But I mean, Russia. But can they, will, will, a, will a search on Google find them anywhere in the world? For the most part, yeah. Unless there's a country restriction on okay. those certain right. locations. Do you ever get anything out of country at a customer level? Um, a little bit in Canada. So my Facebook ads right now are, are targeting both Canada and the United States, so um, so I'm updating both that now. Okay, well that's Facebook. I guess I was thinking actual Google search engine. Um, I mean, right now not so much with this company. My previous company, uh, which, which was called Trident Investments, back when I did real estate back in Las mm -hmm. Vegas, I was getting, I was getting hits all over the world. Okay. All right. But I was running a business for 16 years with a lot of SEO. <laughs> right. right. And I had 600 videos pointing to my website. So I have a, so if you talk to lease option Las Vegas, I think I told you that back in 2017, I'm on page one of Google, I missed five months. Yeah. So, cool. so, so <laughs> it was, but, because, but I'm also being very specific. Oh, that's right. Country. There was some country, was it England or someplace that was very interested in this and you weren't sure why? Oh, the UK. Uh, when I wrote my first book, uh, it was called Lease Options oh, Made book. Easy. Okay. And if I go to uh, uh, Amazon, I see I sell more of my, my lease option book in, London, in the UK than I do in the United States. <laughs> What's up with that? So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go to Psychic Cards. We're all getting, again, a little, uh, running out of a little bit of time here. So again, this is how I'm going to actually go ahead and create a different one. I'm going to call it Birthday 4. You know, it doesn't matter what I, uh, what I call it at this point because I'm not really using it. 
So first off, I'm, I'm in my SiteGround account. I'm going to go ahead and log in. I want to get this course. And after I log in, um, that, my my account, my, my master account is through the, that URL. The, uh, is, uh, to the Kevin A. Dunlap, uh, dot com URL because I have multiple websites on, on, on this thing. This is what they call what is it called? So I'm going to log in. How much is your lifetime pay for that? You said you bought a lifetime one? Yeah, well, lifetime meaning it expires February 28th at 1159 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, year. <laughs> this year. Oh, oh, so it's not. So you could do like, I, I would do, you know, $15 a day, or I say, you know what, I'm going to run for 10 days, and I'm going to maximize it by um, by saying it's, it's a lifetime thing, and I have to start to get an end date. Oh. So they'll spend $150, or whatever dollar amount I put in there within that time frame. If Facebook ads or Meta sees that ads of my type are not good or are not strong on Monday and Tuesday, it will put a like uh, amount on Monday and Tuesday, and then put the heavier on, on more productive things. So that's to me why a lifetime could be better than it is on a daily because a daily you could be spending money on days that your ad should not be running all that strong. Mm -hmm. That's that's my takeaway. Okay, that's cool. I appreciate that. That's what I was kind of talking to Zach about. Um, so I'm going to go under uh, websites, and as you can see, I have multiple different websites. I've got Optimal Performance Academy up here on the top left, tryinvestmentsllc.com. Now this website right now, I think I did it through GoDaddy before I switched over, because this was a few years ago. If you were to go to this website right now, it will automatically take you to kevinadelap.com. It will redirect you to another URL. Okay, and that's fairly easily done. You just have to go to whoever your hosting uh, company is and, and do it there. So if you're doing a name change or a URL change, you create your new URL, that's what you're building everything on, and but you still want the people that were on going to your old website to go to your first one, you would just go to inside there and, and put a redirect uh, to there. Yeah. Now, if I'll go ahead and go to my email, and I, uh, my main email, I got three email accounts. My main email is the Trident one. So I'm still getting emails going to, let me go ahead and just click on one here, going to my you see the, the, the segment of it is going to my Kevin A. Try to invest in that one. That's my default email. So even though I'm doing a redirect on my on my website, my emails are still coming to my from Microsoft Outlook. Yeah. So, so I, I still use that. That's still like one of my um, uh, one of my main uh, email addresses. So just because you do a redirect on your website doesn't mean your email gets turned off. So I I wrote a book. My second book. Uh, excuse me. My Uh, my second book is called Design Your Own Destiny. So I, I bought that URL as well. That thing's going to expire here in a few months. Um, my, my company, uh, Optimal Performance Academy, the original name what, was called Plent PlentifulPerspectives.com. So, so I have that what, what was that again? What was that? Plentiful Perspectives. That was the original name of my Optimal Performance Academy company. Okay. okay. So, so I, I have done name changes as well, logo changes and things like that. Yeah. And then, of course, we've got the Kevin Name Dunlop, which is more when I created that one. Um, that was more for uh, the speaking business. Okay. So anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and go into the URL that I want to create the, 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 the subdomain. So I'm going to go under here, um, under Site Tools. If you don't have, uh, it doesn't matter if you have a WordPress site or not at, at this particular level. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and like, click on that. So that's why I'm not doing anything where it says the WordPress add I'm not doing anything in WordPress. Everything I'm doing right now is in Cycro. Yeah. Okay, so under domain, then it's called the uh, D DNS Zone Editor. Okay, so I want to take notes on that. Now, uh, and I'm not an expert at this, Kyle is more, more like the, uh, the expert at this. You have all these di different kinds of records. If I were to go back to Heap, you will see uh, under there that if I was going to co connect a domain, let's say birthday four, I was going to hit the connect right there. I'm not going to go through this process, but you will see that it says to create a text record as well as a, a C name record. Now, this, te this text record is only done once. So once you've set this up once, it's going to be true for anything else that you're going to be doing. What is that going to do for? That is where it's connecting to uh, Infusionsoft, which is also key. Keep is 
the rebranded uh, name for Infusionsoft. So that's, this is basically connecting uh, this going to be upcoming uh, URL to my, my Keep account. So that's it. So that, so that SiteGround and Keep can now talk together. Okay. Okay. Then secondly, I need to create a, this thing, a, this C name. I forget what C name stands for it before I look it up. Is it at, at sign kind of a minimal name or not? I don't know. I don't know. It's more of a wild card for the list of domain records. So in that case, by doing it once and by applying the at sign, technically uh, the star symbol for wildcard and DNS records right. does not really play that well, so they use okay. the at sign instead. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then, you know, and then, and then I'm going to have to create this new one um, called uh, birthday four dot uh, and I'm going to and I'm going to connect it to uh, pages dot So that that's this is the this the, this is the important one that you have to do. Once you've done this one once. Then the, this time, this is going to be done for every single subdomain that you create. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder if my provider has tools like this. It should. Yeah. Are you familiar with Easy DNS? Uh, Fifteen years ago, yes. <laughs> well, they're still in business. <laughs> <laughs> they got at least me as a customer, and their their uh, technical support's pretty good. Supposedly, it's a Canadian company. The last guy I talked to there didn't have a Canadian accent. So. <laughs> You might have been in San Francisco. Maybe. Fifteen years ago. So, so what I'm going to do here is so, so, so that I can easily remember this. I'm going to copy uh, that inf that information right there. So I highlighted it. I can just Control C for copy, and then I'm going to go back to uh, my site tools. So you will see we have A records, uh, four A records, the C name, MX, the service, and text. If I were to scroll down, you will see I have a lot of these uh, C names. And I say you can delete those if you want to. Yes, you can delete them and you can't edit them. But you have a load of some sort? Or no? No, I don't think it should be a load. I don't know why I can't make it And for canonical. It can be canonical name, which is that. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know why I cannot scroll up and down. Try to scroll more. I'm going to uh, log back into the same time. I wonder if the internet is still working. I'm still trying to have internet, and I, and I don't think it's going to be. Go back to websites, or site tools. Again, if you're on another site, you may have slightly different, but the process should be very, very similar. Yeah. So I'll go to the DNS that zone right here. Technically speaking, as long as your hosting provider or your uh, your domain name manager is good, then you should be able to do unlimited subdomains. Just make sure not to do too many, because if you do too many, one, you're going to forget them all, and two, if you have too many of them pointing to the same location, then you're going to get uh, dinged with um, varying SEO uh, okay. audits. Right. So, so that's a common practice to allow unlimited uh, subdomains. I mean, well, they can't prevent it. It's just a feature of the, of the art, net, uh, internet architecture, maybe? It, it really depends on the service. For most places, like for example, I use Cloudflare, mm -hmm. and Cloudflare allows you to pretty much edit any record you want. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I can add as many subdomains as, as I want. Mm -hmm. uh, some services, such as, uh, let's just use GoDaddy, for example, they may may have a limit of you get 10 subdomains and you got to pay us for it. And yeah. There's no extra cost in there, and it's just right. costing them to create it, but they may have a limit on how many you can create. Right. Right. And yeah, I mean, and if, if you are going with a uh, hosting provider, that if, that if you're going to be doing a lot of sales on landing pages, like like what I'm doing, exactly doing something very very similar, um, then then that, that is going to become important. Just like yeah. I, the whole reason I left GoDaddy is because when I found out uh, when SSO started becoming really important as far as Google searches were concerned, like in 2015, 16, and 17, uh, at that time GoDaddy was charging 100 dollars for that SSO. Well, Cycle was free, but why would I stay with that? Mm -hmm. Why are they charging me uh, for this top of this feature? That little lane just keeps getting locked up. Okay, so this is my third time, third time's a charm, DNS Engineer. So I'm going to uh, C name. And you'll see here I can, um, uh, 
put whatever I want you in front of the dot optimal performance academy dot org. So I don't have to type in that whole URL and then I put and where it's going to be resolved to. That's going to be where where we were on uh, uh, on, on key. That's where uh, it's going to be or day four is going to be resolving to that page dot infusionsoft dot dot net. So what I'm basically going to do right now is I'm going to go and type in birthday four. Control V. And uh, does that matter at all? That TTL or I mean, it decreases the thing uh, immediately. So. Not really, as far as what you're doing for this. Okay. So, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create that. I can scroll down. You can see my birthday four is right there. So it's going to be uh, pages.vsoft.net. You will see I have all, uh, a whole bunch of other ones when I'm doing my courses. Now, remember, this is site ground to my um, landing page. Sure. It's not going to my website. I'm just using uh, something for, uh, on my website so that they can um, connect the two together. I'm going to go back here, and uh, since I just created it, I'm going to actually check it and see what happens. Again, I yeah, that's a little bit more than I would have uh, anticipated. Do you understand why that would happen? Is it because maybe I started trying to connect it before I actually created it? Well, usually uh, DNS records take around 24 hours to propagate across the whole. Okay. Um, so right now it, it had, like you said, it may take a little bit time to uh, go across the world because I'm doing it in seconds instead of mm -hmm. uh, 24 hours. If you, you'll see it uh, here. I hit the back button. It says it, you have 24 hours up there. Yeah, I'm assuming it's going to finish up. You mean time to What's it? The TTL is time to live, but the updating of the records, if you look on the right side of the page, any changes in the records you're thinking they may need after 24 hours of propagate. Mm -hmm. There you go. And uh, in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and say verify. And now the, uh, the birthday four uh, is now one of the, the two that are now linked there. So I can go in here and um, I can't highlight it. So I'm just going to go in and just So that should take me to the landing page. So to me, if I'm going to be uh, keeping track of this, you know, doing my Facebook ads, and I want to make sure that my, my URL is part of that Facebook ad, this is, this is exactly the, the process that I go to. I create my landing page, go to SiteGround, create the subdomain, and then use that subdomain uh, and put it in with my landing page. That way now, uh, whenever I run my ads, it's always going to be, in this case, the birthday four. Does it show up on your website then? It was not going to show up on my website. It's, it's, it's going to this URL uh, at SiteGround, and SiteGround is redirecting them to, uh, to, uh, to my landing page on Keep. Now, for me, and my understanding, just to reiterate this, from what I've been talking to them at the Netta people on Facebook, um, by having my URL as part of the link inside the Facebook ad rather than just like go to the keep landing page thing, which has got nothing to do that with my URL, shows us has a stronger um, uh, presence. I, I don't know if it's called presence, but it has a stronger connection to making sure that my site, my, my thing is a legitimate site. What's the advantage of pressing Facebook? Uh, do they show your ads more often? Or? I, I'm not exactly sure it's showing it, but I get a higher impression rate. But, but, but I was under the assumption it has to do more with your legitimacy. Mm -hmm. So. For example, um, we, yeah, we at Big Frog actually launched a uh, an online apparel store called 919 Store. It has nothing to do with BigFrog.com or anything else. And when we tried to, to add it to our Facebook anything, uh, because it didn't associate with our business page, they wouldn't let us do it. Mm -hmm. So we would have to create something with the domain BigFrog.com that has the association, whether it's 919.BigFrog.com or whatever that has that domain in it that is associated with a business page in order for the legitimacy of that site to be uh, okay. associated with the content that we do. And a redirect would be one way to do that. If he has access to uh, to do that with the, with the big frog. Right. Okay. Go over. That's why I said at the very beginning, if you've got access to your own uh, you know, your own website, then this, these are tools right. that would be very, very, if you don't have access, like he's not gonna have access to Spotify. Can, you know, he can only do so much with his store because he's got a pre-built website. Big Frog's got a big a pre-built website. There's only so much that they can do. But if he can uh, create this 919 brands, then or he have to or that or 
um, you would say, and Carol's much smarter than um, this than I am, but uh, create a second business page that's not on my brands. That's, I don't know if that would help or not on, uh, as Facebook a business. That would explore, yeah, but we, but we thought about uh, keeping everything under one umbrella just to make sure we're not getting a bill closed or anything. Right. But it's certainly, possi it's certainly a possibility. Yeah. I've actually been to that site, that final one, it's like rally clothes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, why do you not have it direct right to your web page? So why because you... my landing page is on a different site. I mean, I could, if, if I had a, a, a WordPress plugin, and, and, and uh, I, I was, before I joined Key, I did have a, um, a, a plugin that I used through Elementor, which is the, the, the drag and drop uh, web page builder. There was a landing page feature on there, but every time I got it to work, only half the page would load bottom half when they were loaded. Oh, it got yeah. so frustrating, like, I need, to, I, I need to go off my site. Now, if you've got your landing page on your website, because you've got a feature like that, then you can use it. But I also want to make sure that you guys are aware of the difference between a landing page and a page on your website. The landing page will have no menu. That's only your one call to action. There's no way for them to distract them to go somewhere else. While a page on your website will have your menus and could have uh, multiple different uh, links in there. That's why that's, that's why I was very, very adamant about it. I wanted a landing page. I did not want a page on my website. They're completely different functions. Now you're not trying to bring people to your website? Is there? No, I'm doing this right here so, because I'm, as Kyle so. Butts was saying, that's more legitimate when you're running your ads. Gotcha. And also, I'm using my, um, my website there as part of my, uh, my, my advertising. Because I can give that birthday free, and then uh, I can I can very easily go uh, go into my landing page, unclick this one from here, and then you know, unclick the uh, birthday three as an example, and now I will still still use the birthday three, but I'm going to have them go to um, oh I'm going to have them connected to uh, to this to this landing page. So all they do is unclick, unlink it. Look, now I've changed the landing page that they're going to. Now, the reason you may do that is for, that, for example, you're testing a long page landing page versus a short page landing page. And, and, there, and then you find out, hey, I got my birthday two was my short form, birthday three is my long form, and I noticed that on my testing that a birthday two gets 90% of my traffic. I don't want to go change all my ads, so I just go change birthday three to birthday two. Oh, I see. So that's where you can that, that we can just very easily just change our, where they're going. That distinction between the landing page and the website, I've never heard that before. What what is the functional or philosophical difference between the two? Well, what, a web page is basically for them to get information about you. Your landing site. page? No, your web page. Okay, website. Your website is for them to get that information about you. A landing page has one call to action. Should not, well, it should have one call to action. Okay. It's basically give me your name, give me your email, whatever, uh, uh, for uh, for uh, for them to do something. Schedule a strategy session. Get a lead night, you know, a free gift, you know, mm -hmm. maybe it's a PDF, a report, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, the landing page could also be go buy my fifty-seven dollar uh, bundle of courses. Mm -hmm. So that's what the landing page does. Basically, the landing page is, is essentially have them take one course of action that you want them to take, and then that would lead them to. What I, uh, that would either, either do another course of action, which we're, we're going to talk about next time, that's why you're self processed, or it's going to, uh, or eventually it's going to end, uh, end on what's called a thank you page. Mm -hmm. so, so your website could have a link to the landing page. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So the landing page is kind of the end of the marketing process, essentially. Well, I mean, because if you're on my website, I don't send anybody to landing pages. I send them to an information page, which is a web page, website page. And then, uh, if you like it, click this button, and you go into the checkout process. You go into buy, you go into the checkout form. Okay. So I don't need them to go through the landing page. Okay. The landing page is great for uh, when you're uh, advertising, like say, uh, uh, let's say you have flyers, or if you have, you know, a a, a a thing going on right now, or an event going on, or if you are going to be doing Facebook, Google ads. YouTube ads, Instagram ads, whatever, where you want them to go through a process. Is that a common understanding of the term landing page, do you think? Well, there's different names for it. Some people call it a sales page. Some people call it a squeeze page. It's also known as a landing page. They all mean basically the same okay. thing. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Do you link your website 
from the landing page? I mean, because to me, you're always trying to get people to go to your website, so I don't understand why you're going Well, there. going to my website, yes, but if they're going to a landing page and they're, and they're putting in their uh, their email address, for an example, to get this free gift, this free gift that they're going, now they're, now they're on, my, on my mailing list. Um, now I'm just a contact with them. So, like, so the, the web page is, 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 is a way for them to learn more about you, maybe buy from you. You could also have uh, have it where they could say on my website I do have hey schedule a strategy session, which would take them to my landing page of the of my schedule. So, so they they work together, but they they each have different functions. Yeah. Are they considered inbound and outbound links, or not necessarily? Mm, with the landing page, no, because it's used on a different platform. Like mine is on all my landing pages are on Keeps. That there is no inbound and outbound As link, with the exception of. The, uh, the URL that's going through uh, SiteGround. You said they're on different platforms in the landing page or on Keep, that's as opposed to what else? As opposed to being on OPA.org. It's being on it's my actual website. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, all right. Because yeah. cool. originally I was trying to put my landing pages on my website this within the last nine months or so. I would think technically there'd be no problem with doing that. Ideally, yes, but I just I, I would do mine. Yeah, mine's a WordPress site, uh, so I was using a, a plugin, a different uh, different plugin, but I just wasn't getting them to work properly because they would like to. They're only showing the top half. The bottom half would just be disappeared. So it's like I, I just got so fresh because I, I was using uh, like landing pages for Elementor, which is you know, the the, uh, the the platform where I use for the to create the actual pages. But I was not getting it to work, and uh, and then I was at Mailchimp at that time, and Mailchimp had landing pages too, but I couldn't get those to work out the way that I wanted them. Well, that was work. just a technical problem that you were having with these. It could have been these creations. But then when I uh, was introduced to Keep, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can build a landing page in five minutes, yeah. and then I have all these other sequences that I could do. Now Mailchimp has what they call journeys, which is somewhat similar to this, you know, as far as the email campaigns. So like for an example, if this is a, a pretty simple journey. This will start running at any time. It will sign it to me, remove a tag, and then, I, and then I'm, uh, I'm applying a note. Now I can make a, I can have uh, that somebody gets me, uh, I get some message. I can personalize that message. I can do whatever. I don't do that at this level because for this one specific process, they're actually all that all the emails and tags that they're getting are all done with my checkout form. So, so I, I can put them in either in either location. So let me show you an example of a complicated. One. Can you do a mass email on here too? Or I, I, I cannot do a mass email at this at this level. Mm -hmm. However, what? Uh, let me go ahead and publish. And if you're if you're interested in key, I've got a card uh, thing over there. This is a we schedule time where we can actually talk about the, the the pros and cons of this. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of uh, the birthday bundle. I'm going to go to roadmap. Can I add a, a comment to the whole landing page website thing? Sure. So hopefully kind of bring this full circle. The landing page has one purpose, literally. That the whole point is to go to it and have some sort of, some sort of call to action within the first uh, few seconds of it loading. Mm -hmm. While yes, it can be under your website and there's not a problem with that, um, if you have a platform that can easily build a landing page like Key, then by all means use that. Otherwise you have to go into your website and build a landing page, strip out all the extra stuff and then uh, create a purpose and it's just a whole bunch of extra work. If you and create a landing page like through this, then by all means it gets rid of all the extra stuff and allows you to create that one true call to action. Yes, you can have your website linked from it and vice versa, but again, when people go to that one page, that they have one sole purpose and it, it's usually to provide their email to download something to get them on mailing list or something like that. Uh, are, are landing pages typically dynamic because you're testing different versions and stuff like that? Or? It can be. They can be, uh, depending on how far you want to go with that, uh, but usually it's pretty static. Um, okay. Unless you have some kind of like event repeating where you can like have a countdown timer or something, yeah. but 99% of the time they're, they're pretty static. Well, if they're pretty static, I would think it's people who want to work to do it in the regular website. Right? You can, based on how you're building it, like through WordPress, you may not be able to remove your menu from all pages. Yeah, that's the big thing right there. Really? Yeah. And also, your, you can be in your footer, like your privacy, your terms of service, your privacy. Okay, all right, that's very interesting. Yeah. And you've got your site map in your footer, and that's just good. <laughs> 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 so you're going to be way too expensive. So it's better than, I mean, like what Kyle was saying, 
Um, your landing page has only one purpose, one call to action. It could be get through email, it could be clicking this button to schedule a strategy session, it could be clicking this button to, um, to download this, uh, this lead magnet where you capture the email. Um, it, it could be any uh, uh, of You could have products. multiple landing pages from different products. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Actually, okay. that's kind of the purpose. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> So like here, like, like um, one of, uh, this is one of my more complicated uh, 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 sequences. This is what I, when I was doing a, uh, a webinar where I had people come to a landing page and then they pick between four different time slots to, um, to, uh, to watch this webinar, to watch this live webinar. I gave a fifth choice to, hey, watch the replay. Why, why wait until Friday at one o'clock? Watch the replay. So I, so I had that as my sequence. So essentially what this one is, it's not as complicated as it looks, but uh, let's say for, for an example here, this landing page, again, this was to a schedule call, and right here, you, I can't see the, road, I, I can't see this one here, I can't see the drop down menu as you would see on a web page, but I can click on this, so I can say inside this here, it's called a virtual field, um, And um, inside here, they, they can pick, hey, you can pick the either Saturday, uh, February 4th at 10 o'clock, Saturday, February 4th at 12 o'clock, watch the replay on this. This one only gave three choices, okay? So normally I had the Friday ones in here as well, so I, I updated this web page. I did update my, my key processes, but I just, uh, I, you know, so I happen to have a choice of action with an email. That's, that's all that this one was. Then click the button. So what would happen after that is that they would then go to it's called a redirect option. They're going to go to my thank you page. So, so once they put put in their information, they will go to this page right here. Thank you for registering for this class. Check your email for our times and dates and Zoom links and all that stuff. So that was that process. Now I'm going to go and back out of this. I'm not going to republish it because I didn't change anything. And you'll see down here I have roadmap two. Blah, blah. So right now, if you put the roadmap two, that landing page will show up. Now it's updated because it's picking dates that are earlier this month. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that. So once they uh, they, they got that landing page, they got the thank you thing, they put in their information. All they did are give me information of their email and the time slot that they want. That's all that they're giving. Money, no credit cards, no. Mm -hmm. One call to action. I've done a bunch of those trainings and they'll do them like every 15 minutes and just run the replay. Like, which training do you want to join? Well, I mean, this one's a, a bit more uh, a complex. Now, inside the, the inside those those three choices, I'm also applying what's called a tag. A tag is basically I'm giving them a, a, basically an identifier as to what's going to happen to them. In, the, in those cases, there, I, I can go back to because I can show you what the tag is. Again, this is I'm, uh, I don't, this is more for next uh, next time. So Frank and I went in there. We have different tags. Right now. Um, no, oh. for you guys, no. But if, you know, I can go here and you, you'll see. I'm gonna hit this thing that says tags. Right there. Yeah. So they will get tagged with new lead because they're not a customer yet. So everybody gets tagged a new lead. A new lead is how we're gonna. I'm gonna be sending out uh, an email says, hey guys, I have a birthday bundle for an example. By the way, we've got a, uh, this, new, this new process, a new program coming out, and uh, probably you know, because they're a new lead and not bought, they're just, they're just a lead. I'm also gonna tag them as Web09. That's the code that I gave myself for Saturday uh, uh, 10 o'clock. The date is wrong. I've changed that date at a time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they're also gonna get tagged with Webinar Roadmap. So that is, that's what I did there. So I can just click out. So if I were to go to the, the second one for the, for the 12 o'clock one, you see I, I actually gave them a tag of Web 10. Okay, but everything else is the same. So now I'm distinguishing between the time slots. So now I know that, hey, if you're tagged at, at Web 9, at 9.30, you're gonna get an email. Thank you, don't forget in 30 minutes, then that, 11.30, I went to get tagged at, hey, Web 10, by the way, our class starts in 30 minutes. Exact same email, 
He said, I would change the time inside the email. But everything else is exactly the same. So, Do you, do you ever uh, get phone numbers to send them text messages? Or? I can't. Uh, Keith does I have an SMS of, uh, feature to it. I think you, you can do like 250 messages a month. So it does have? It does. Okay. Again, that's why I'm working on it. They, they combine so many different things in the air. I don't know about other people, but I get so many emails. I have to say my emails kind of. Well, that's the, the kind of purpose of SMS uh, texting is 90% uh, uh, of the people are reading text messages, and only about 2% are receiving their emails. Yeah, reading. I can believe it. So, in this particular case, is I've got these two different landing pages right here, and the, both these landing pages are going to go into that one sequence. Okay? So, you see here, RM2 and RM3. Those are my short codes, my subdomains. Mm -hmm. that I'm, so I know which one goes to which one. I, and I'm just putting it as part of the title. And then in this particular case, I'm gonna assign it to myself. I'm gonna apply a note. A note just basically asks their, uh, the, to their CRM, hey, this person signed up for this uh, webinar at February 3rd at 11.55 uh, a.m., you know, whatever it is. You just casually mentioned CRM. You haven't oh. mentioned that before. What are you referring to here? That's how you keep track of your contacts. I know, but it's usually a system that you use, right? See, I use Keith. Keep that is Keith. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. How much is Keith? Um, um, the introductory price right now, I think, is $90 a month. Okay. But again, it includes your landing pages, sale process, checkout forms, yeah, your yeah. CRMs, your email campaigns, SMS texts. You're selling a lot of stuff, so it's cheap. It's if you want to integrate everything into one without trying to figure out how do I connect MailChimp to, through this app to do this and like, yeah. Right. Just put everything together. <laughs> and also, when I, you saw for an example, I went and tagged you for a road, for all, the, all the three of you guys from Roadmap for Business Success inside Keep, inside your, your CRM, you automatically were uh, given a course in Customer Hub. Okay. That's good. So, it's, I, I mean, we, we put everything together in one location. That to me is extremely powerful. Sure. Yeah. Now, now, also, um, you will see here, they're going to apply a note, and then now they're going to be getting this email. This is my generic email. This is the, hey, you just signed up. So you will notice, I do not put a time and date in there. That's delivery. Mm -hmm. So I've got, and, I, and I've got my thing there. Um, usually I have my logo uh, uh, as part of the email. And then I said, okay, I, I like that. I turn them and go and uh, back that out. And then I'm going to back that out. And then they're going to go through this little diamond here. That's what they call a decision diamond. That means that, hey, what, if you're tagged, and I can open this up, if you're tagged um, as a, uh, if, you, if you pick the, uh, the, the replay one, um, so, so that's what, what I call that. And the tag for that one was, um, I'm giving them that course. Now, if they uh, picked uh, the Friday class, they will get by those six. They go down one route. If they did uh, the uh, seven, they'll go down to the Friday. Uh, uh, this sequence. If they did uh, the, the next one after that, the Web Nine, the Web Ten is the two that I showed you, because those are the ones that were still uh, on Sorry. Um, and then they're going to go into these uh, into these two different sequences. So. So basically what that does is, uh, now if they're going to be going into the replay, if, if that decision time, they're going to follow that uh, that arrow and then they're going to go through that sequence on top. If they picked the web nine, this one here, uh, that decision time is now sending them through this sequence. And if they pick web 10, or they were tagged web 10, now they're going to go through that sequence. So so these are all time, uh, uh, time related. That's how, uh, like, uh, uh, you, you probably got an email from me about an hour before the event, uh, before our strategy comes. That's, that's all automatic. Right. That's, that's what all of our emails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With except for when I said I sent you like 15 minutes prior, like, where's the, where's the URL link? I just sent you my normal Zoom link. Yeah, because I couldn't tell if I was just supposed to tell you. Yeah. So there's a breakdown in that. And then, of course, then it's, uh, uh, this is the reminders of the call. And then I have here, like, hey, by the way, um, this is two hours after the, the, uh, the webinar began. Uh, this is how you want to watch the replay. All of that's automatic. That's cool. So, um, but anyway, the, 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 well, the thing is, by using the subdomains here, I, that's, that goes into the landing page and then whatever sequence that I want them to, to do. In this case, I'm, I'm waiting for them to watch the webinar before they have to actually take any action. 
like, hey, schedule a strategy session or download my book. Okay, so, um, so that to me is what why this is so important. Like, this is the birthday three is to keep that together. Now, I don't want to get too in depth, but uh, one of the things that Kyle said uh, was that when you start creating a lot of subdomains, not even if like, you start creating so many that you lose track. I actually created a, a spreadsheet, and this is what I do. You, I use myself, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go maximize this. And this is called Sale Two, as an example. This is the birthday bundle. You can see it right there, the top left. So these are these are my URLs. I don't have a short code for the, uh, uh, for this one uh, per se, uh, which is you know for just the one course because this is all just going to landing pages. But you will see here. I got birthday one, and I got birthday three. These are the, the, the sequences. This course. is a heck of a uh, spreadsheet. Did you create this manually yourself? Yeah. Actually, this has been in, reincarnated like four times, but <laughs> but uh, uh, but it, you'll notice I have this set up for sales one hundred one, sales one hundred two, uh, sales one hundred three, and uh, even and even a sales one hundred four. Yeah. So if I got four different landing pages, they're, they're going through here. And I even made these as a, uh, a drop down menu. Right. And that helps you tell where your leads are coming Right, because if I do in birthday three, that's the redirect link. They're going to land on this landing page here. That landing page is going to take them to this checkout form, which is for $57. Then the next step in the checkout form, after they, uh, instead of going to a thank you page, they're going to go to another landing page. That's going to be a strategy session. Once they schedule the strategy session, I don't have to go into anything else. I'm not going to have to, uh, uh, finished with a thank you page. So this spreadsheet doesn't cause anything to happen. It's just your way to keep saying and keep track of what you're doing. Keep it, keep, keep it, like OPC or CYTF, the uh, 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 crafting your, uh, your your transformation talk. I already said that if you go to my website, dot org forward slash CYTS, that's going to take you to basically uh, a thank you. So the different sales funnels, though, is it a different pattern for each person, or is it to tell where Often, the leads are coming from? It's for me to keep track of um, you know, you know, each action step, because when you are doing a, a checkout form on Key, it, it's a little hard to see, the, because the defaults go to a thank you page, but I want to make sure that, hey, they're doing this checkout form, they want to go to another landing page, that, that, that I'm keeping track of all that. And this may be unnecessary for some people, because it's just too much data, but I like having control or, or knowledge of this because, for an example, if you're doing a sales funnel properly, you may have to land on a landing page. Give me your email uh, and I'll give you this free report. Then it goes to what's called a tripwire, which is, hey, now for only $37, I'll give you this great program that's normally cost $500. Yeah. Okay, then you go put my, 30, my credit card in for 30, 37 that goes to the checkup form. And then it goes to another landing page. Well, congratulations on buying this program. I've got this great this coaching program that you would be great for for only four thousand dollars. So, so that that here is to set that up is to have that sales sequence, which I'm going to talk about next week. Okay, but like, would you give the sales funnel link to like your Facebook ads, sales funnel too? I would actually go uh, so like most Craigslist. most of the things start with the redirect link. But I mean, is that, are you, are you using that to keep track of stuff at all? Like, you so I keep track of it myself. Like birthday one to Facebook, birthday two is your Craigslist ad, birthday three is, um, or not really. Well, I would probably, if I was doing a Craigslist ad and a Facebook ad, I wouldn't go to the same landing page. I would use birthday one and birthday one on both. So, so you're not keeping track of where you're getting your leads from? I can do that, and that would be one of the other purposes for doing that, if you want to track that. Okay. Uh, because if they're coming in from a, cer- a certain way, then you may tag them, like this was Craigslist, and then now you, you can differentiate uh, through your tags on your CRM. Just so you know what's working. Yes. Yeah. So, like when I was doing the roadmap uh, webinar, I was keeping track of, or oh, you came from Eventbrite, or oh, you came from all, all events.in, or you came, so I watched, I, I watched uh, tracking that specifically. Mm-hmm. Then I realized I didn't really need it. But, uh, or I wasn't using the data. Now I could I could look at the data like okay I'm seeing I get 80 percent of my traffic from LinkedIn so I know to spend most so that, that that's good to track that kind of information. Right. Yeah. That's what I was wondering about that. Yeah. Any questions, Scott? I know it's four o'clock, four six. Hopefully, I mean if you if you knew a lot more than that stuff than, than I do. So thank you for correcting me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to know what I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this was helpful to you or not, or this last little bit. 
I mean, it, it's a little overwhelming just looking at it, but I understand the purpose of the, the tracking and planning of it to make sure that you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And if anyone else were to take this over, they would know what to do and, and where things uh, go in certain places instead right. of just being you know, all here. Correct. And that's the reason I created this. Was main, it was mainly for, for me personally, I can't do this here, um, was mainly um, well, in, in, in my uh, checkout form, where do I want them to go next? That was, that was my main thing. Because I was like, how do I get them to go to the next landing page? So, but then I finally figured it out. Like, and now once I have done this once, if I need to go and say, I have, I have an error somewhere, I can start tracking each piece. Like for example, this is the, uh, for that one checkout form, I go control C, close that. Right here, control V, and that's about check checkout form looks like. So I can go there or check that the landing page is that the right video that I want that on there. Maybe I maybe I'll do a Facebook ad that's good to landing pages for sixty five and older. Mm -hmm. Now another landing uh, another Facebook ad say birthday two is going to somebody fifty five to sixty five because I want to differentiate male or female or age groups or something like that. So when I was doing roadmap as an example, I would say, are you retired? Are you looking for something new in this new stage of your life? But if you're a 40 year old, like, that's like, what? I, I, that video would not identify to that person. Mm -hmm. So I would create different landing pages based upon that. And, um, and when I was. Who said? That's what I like when you pointed at me when you said 40. <laughs> so does Facebook have people's uh, birthdays? They, 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 what they do is they're not going to give it to you. I mean, they give it to you, but for marketing. Well, we you do your marketing. You have, you have a you have, you have a, you have a, a birthday. Now it's up to the, the user if they want to display it or not. But you have to put it in. Uh, yeah, have to put it, it because as far as I know, it's a sixteen-year-old. Maybe I did. They don't verify. It could be yeah. whatever age you want. But. Yeah. And but yeah, the data comes to you in the reports. They don't tell you who you know what age the user is. They give you a range. Of ten, a ten years. So it's kind of yeah. anonymized. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Unless you have like a lead tracker or a lead generator on Facebook, they're not going to tell you exactly who did what. But okay. as far as the ages go, actually, here's a report I read earlier today, or I committed yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So this is this is a Facebook report for the birthday bundle that, I, that I'm running right now. Is it Georgia Beer? What is that? <laughs> That's a graveyard that was used in The Walking Dead. Oh, is that right? Uh, I got a lot of pictures for the. Is that a real graveyard? Yeah. So uh, this is this is some data from uh, one of my uh, ads uh, recently. I, I stripped out all of the um, um, all the dates because it was date range weren't, weren't important to me. But you'll see here in column B, age groups. Oh yeah. So uh, here's here are my clicks, and I and I sorted this by clicks going from uh, from column L, which is the link clicks going from the uh, max to the, to the least max. Now if I was to look at that and I go over the same. Data. Oops, sorry. Which age groups do you think I'm targeting? This is what Facebook told me. Wow. Like, okay, I don't see any 45 year olds in there. Or there's, there's a few, two ones right, uh, right there. Oh, yeah. Everybody else is 55 and older. So, but, but the thing is, right there, should I be targeting 20 year olds? No. I'm wasting money, I'm wasting time on that. Also, I, I do my, I, I, I labeled my ads that were different, slightly different names. So this is me just doing video ads and I have H1, H2, and H3. H1 is headline one, H headline two, headline three. I'm testing my headlines. Mm -hmm. This is what you get from your data. This is what Zach should be looking at if he is not already. He probably is. Boy, man, if I were him, I'd be really frustrated. He didn't get a single purchase, did he? Is that what he said? Uh, little to none, yeah. It's like he had a lot of people in his shopping cart. That's why I asked him, did he have an abandoned, it's called an, an abandoned cart routine where, I mean, I'm sure you've got stuff on Amazon that's in your cart. Yeah, I bought it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I use my cart in my wish list. <laughs> 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 well, they have an actual wish list, you know. Well, I know, but that's what everybody else does. <laughs> Amazon's an incredible like website. Man, they just do everything, it works, it's amazing. If you can become an, an Amazon affiliate and you have a good blog and, and a good reach in your blog, it's a great thing. Bring some extra income. I met a lady that her husband is selling on 
sort of chemistry stuff on Amazon, and she says they just keep taking more and more and more. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos, sorry. She's in the business as well, or, or she's just her husband, so. she works for Edward Jones, but her husband sells something. He's just said he's a chemist, he sells something on Amazon. Probably <laughs> <laughs> it's the dark web. <laughs> but, you know, so, that's I mean, that's when you start running Facebook ads, this is what you're going to be looking at. So, what are that's cool. what, which numbers say how many clicks you got? So where does the reach number come in? 151. Where does what the hell does that mean? That's how many people that they saw the ad. Um, I'm, the impressions are the ones that, that actually showed on their feed. Oh. Does that mean that they actually scrolled to it so mm -hmm. that it showed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I just I've got my Google Analytics working with my Keep landing page. Now again, this the, this data is a is a, is a a, a, a little bit old, that, that one, that last spreadsheet. So if I already go to keep again, I think it's on the marketing. Go to my landing pages. And I just started doing this like two days ago. 83, 83 page views, uh, 68 already views. Since I started doing my, uh, since, I, since I connected my uh, Google Analytics and my, uh, what's the other one? Um, Pexel, my, my Facebook Pexel to my Keep uh, site. So what does a conversion mean? They clicked on something? Yeah, I, I would assume so. Um, do, you think, do you think you got them from Facebook or are you just... Well, I'm only uh, posting my ads on Facebook right now. So that's kind of probably where the 68 came from. Yeah. Now I've also gone in there and, and tested the, 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 where I actually I would bought my own course. Because what's it going to cost me? Not the cost of the course, but I get most of that back. It's going to cost me what the uh, credit card charge rate was. Yeah, sure. Just do a check. Because yeah. I always want to make sure. I'll I mean, make yourself feel good. Too. Well, the thing is, uh, if you've got a higher dollar <laughs> item, then what you what I would suggest you do is you go in there and change the price from say nineteen ninety seven to seventeen dollars. Test it. Knock it back up to nineteen ninety seven. Before mm -hmm. before we make it go by. You mean like Tesla on this car? Well, on Stripe, you, you can run tests, but for keep going through Stripe, there's, there's, you can't run that test. Mm -hmm. And since my checkout form is on keep, it's not on Stripe, uh, that, 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 that differentiates out between those. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. This is all really awesome. And this is what we're talking about next time. It's really cool. Is it, is it next Monday or is it uh, The 13th of Monday. The 13th, Monday the 13th. <laughs> So like but is there a is there a regular uh, session next Monday? Um, I, I'm going to talk to uh, Deja if I can have another um, room in this classroom. Uh, but I do I do know the first two Mondays in uh, for this time for this time slot has been taken. So if I were to do uh, an earlier date, it's going to be on another week or another day of the week. Do you week. have to pay for these rooms? I I do not. No. That's good news. And I prefer the larger room in a way. Even though there's only about four guests here, five, there's about four or five guests last night. Because it's the larger room. This, this is the largest of the three rooms. Oh, yeah. They've, they've got classrooms that have got 100 people sitting there. Really? Wow. It's a cool, cool yeah. spot. Yes, I think it's called the Blue Ridge Room. We'll start running away from my office. <laughs> <laughs> people get on my nerves. <laughs> Are you very close to here? Not far. I'm off well, Carrie Morrisville off Western Park Village. Uh, yeah. yeah. Park West. I'm, in, I'm by the Air Force. Park West Village. Yeah. I, I, the main reason I picked this place is the most for you, number two, we are in a co-working space, so, so, or, so and, and the co-working space is also free, so if you guys wanted to come in on a different day, That's just create yourself an account. And, yeah. and then they've got, <laughs> on Thursday nights at 4.30 to 6.30, they've got the uh, oh, yeah. free beer. Oh, yeah. Oh, whatever they do. I get their emails, I've just never come. That's cool. You don't pee my emails. Yeah. How are you doing? Can I read your emails? <laughs> no, I mean, I get their email. I've been getting friends with oh, emails your emails for years. For years. So, but so I don't have Because they used to have like a food truck day. No, but they got kind of like a uh, technical journal. No, I always read your emails. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for making me feel better. Thank you so much for everything. Of course. Thank you. Again. And again, this was
was my first tech guy. Did you ever? I've tried, and it just doesn't work. Because I knew today was going to be kind of short. Uh, as far as information is concerned, right now, okay. But, but uh, well, wait, this is the fact that you know, I just carry this around without uh, the necessary. Uh, so the password is just to put up something and carry around charges. Do you have a? Uh, I got a microphone anyway. Well, thank you. 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 Thank you.